<laughs> well met, friend. Ooh. <laughs> oh, let's get this over with. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to 2019 HCD World Championship. I am the host of today, Anna Lee. We are here and ready to go at the Hearthstone World Championship here in Chinese Taipei. I am Raven and joining me is Sotl and we've got some great days of Hearthstone ahead of us. How are you feeling, Sol? I'm feeling amazing. It feels incredible to be at the end, not only of the, the, the Hearthstone competitive year, but also in terms of a, a competitive format in general. This very much is the end of the era. And we started with over 6,000 unique players competing in HCT events this year. And we boiled it down to the 16 best of the best who are going to be fighting out for the title of world champion. Yeah, and they're going to be fighting out right over our shoulders here. As you can see, the stage looks absolutely fantastic. You can see more of that as the players actually start very, very soon. We can check out the schedule for the day. As mentioned previously, we are going to kick off groups A and B today, followed up by C and D tomorrow. And then on Saturday, we're going to start the elimination decider matches, while Sunday we are going to crown our world champion. I cannot wait. Every single year this tournament has delivered. And I'm going to say, Sol, this this might be the most stacked one we've ever had. I think that is a very good point to go with, but there are some other headlines that we're going to look at. First off, this is a fresh meta game, as any of you guys that follow Hearthstone at home will know. The players here had only eight days to submit their deck list for the World Championships. And when you speak to a professional player, this isn't a universal rule, but they generally prefer that because they feel they can find more of an edge. You know, they can yeah. huddle in with their practice group. They can keep their tech very secret, which they have been doing, and they can try and gain an edge just by bringing better decks than their opponent. Yeah, and you can see now, just in respect of what you're saying in terms of keeping things secret, all nine classes are represented in this tournament. We can take a look at the details in a little bit, but look at that. If you've been playing ladder, you may have noticed, yeah. but Rogue is pretty popular right now as 15 of these 16 players have brought Rogue and we will see some dominance, I think. I think we're either going to see a ban or a lot of wins because, frankly, I don't really know how you successfully counter that. I think there will be a lot of Rogue bans in this tournament, yeah. Um, we, the players that we spoke to as well, there's kind of a toss-up between Warrior and Rogue, which to the layman have seemed like the two most powerful classes yep. uh, coming out. Again, these players have done a lot of secret testing behind the scenes, so may believe differently. So you're choosing between one of those two classes to ban, and it does seem like players have gone with the Rogue ban overwhelmingly, just because it's so much more time efficient to be able to test <laughs> the, 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 again, very true. games against Rogue than it is games against Warrior. Yeah, that's very true. We can take a look at the popular decks as well. Tempo Rogue, we've just touched on that, so we won't go too deep. You can see Warrior is 
third though, but then Zoo, Midrange Hunter, and Summoner Mage. But Zoo is a bit of a surprise, because for me, I feel like it's very much just an up and down deck. You know, some games you will just blow them out of the water, but then some games the deck feels kind of hopeless, at least to me, Soto. But why are we seeing it so busy here? I mean, it's a great question, and I wish I had a concrete <laughs> answer to give you, and I'd have Pass. to lay aside personal bias to do that, because I also do not think that it's a very strong deck in the metagame. Um, particularly, we're seeing it in lineups for people that are potentially leaving Warrior up as well, which right. is a very scary world to be in. And then they're having to add, like, Arch Thief for a farm to their deck to be able to give themselves some late-game ability, but I'm still not a fan of the build of that card in there. At 69% Zoo Warlocks, that is a big one to watch for me to see how those Zoo players perform. Yeah, it really is. We can see the class representation overall. We did mention that all of the classes are represented, but we can see just on the tail end there, two Druids, one Paladin and one a Priest. Quickly just touch on what the Paladin Priest are, Sal. So the Paladin is being brought by Roger as part of a very, very greedy anti-warrior, anti-control lineup. The Priest is the Chef Nomi Priest, which you may have just started to see um, pop up on Ladder just a little bit, where the idea is to hard cycle your deck with Priest's zero mana spells and get an Auctioneer, and then you have the ability to jam multiple Chef Nomis to fill the board with six sixes over and over again. So those are two of the most unique decks in the format to make sure you keep an eye on. Yeah, I can't wait to see what these lineups and specifically decks and how they perform on the stage. Let's take a look at the first two groups we're going to be checking out today, though. Group A, Salt and myself are going to be starting off with Bunny Hopper versus Blood Trail, and then it's going to be Jing versus Xiao Ti. So just already a Chinese face-off going on there. What do you think about this group, Sal? I think it's very, very stacked, and that Chinese face-off is a big talking point because going back through the past years, you know, China have not had massive representation at the World Championships. They have kind of underperformed as a region. So you can see there, just having the guarantee of at least one Chinese player going through to Group A winners will feel very good for them. Yeah, and a shout out as well, Blood Trail, as I mentioned, you know, at the very, very beginning of the show, recently won a tournament here. <laughs> actually just his. So he has experience in the location and he's just ready to go. Let's check out Group B though. Yeah, we're going to have a language hacker going up against Killen all day. That is a North American showdown at the top there. Killen kind of, I guess, rivaling Ike for the fan favorite in terms of at least uh, American and North American players. And then Muzzy, of course, one of the most dominant players in the US, in the North American scene and in the world in general. It's coming up against Yu Ying from China, who actually a lot of people are picking out as having perhaps the strongest lineup overall, just in terms of how his decks are built. APX Void, the mage expert, has said he has the best mage deck in the tournament. Oh, wow. Death Star, the hunter expert, has said he has the best hunter deck in the tournament. I would like to have a lineup that involves those recommendations yep. from those players. And speaking of players as well, they are going to be representing the teams that they play for. You'll recognize a lot of these. All these players uh, have qualified through one way or another that you'll see through championships more often than not. But the big talking point there, just saying, and Muzzy, you may be used to seeing another logo pop up above those names and them come out wearing a different shirt than what they will be. They have recently uh, departed from Tempo Storm and this is, you have to say, a huge coup for Radiance, their new team, yep. who just immediately have two World Championship players on their roster. Yeah, and it's not only that those two players are at this tournament, as we move on to see some of the uh, other players as well, Tyler for Complexity for My boy. Class, yeah. But uh, it's not only a big deal that to have two players at Worlds, they have arguably two of the best players at Worlds. I think many, many, many people would argue in the form of Saiyan and Muzzy. So very scary duo there to re be representing their new team. But I I'm just very excited for this. And just a final note, we talked about uh, Yu Ying. I'll say there was a very close eye on the Chinese competitors in the previous championships. And I think Yu Ying impressed me the most, to be completely honest. His play, I didn't know a lot about him before. I think his play was just the most overall solid. And that's really what I look for. Nothing too flashy, but getting the job done. I would tend to agree with that. And I think actually in general, we've kind of seen the new blood in terms of the the Chinese scene that come out here and to me they have impressed me more than the players who were kind of came in on legacy uh, legacy yep. picks come through <laughs> that we've seen the repeated Chinese players over and over again these new blood these up and comers these hungry players that have usurped those uh, the old guard from China to me are much more well rounded and consistent looking players yeah and just because we're here at the world championships does not mean we have our own traditions of the predictions as well so I believe we are going to be checking out the caster predictions and you know, by the end of the weekend uh, we're going to see how things go I might 
myself very quickly did pick Bunny Hopper again. This is back-to-back -back picks for me. He got second place at the previous championships, but I like his lineup. I think he's an extremely good player. And I also think in terms of nerves of playing our stage like this, he is one of the most cool, calm, and collected players we've got here. Yeah, this was a difficult one to pick for sure because of how secretive a lot of the preparation was. A lot of these deck lists are untested. You know, we haven't had a massive amount of time due to all our obligations from being out here and just traveling here in the yeah. first place to test them all. Uh, so I went with just saying, again, kind of similar justification to you. His lineup looks very solid to me. I particularly love the way he's built his warrior deck, um, but he's just, just saying, you know, he's a fantastic player. Yeah. And if there's anything you can see here is that he has gone Super Saiyan for this <laughs> tournament. And if there's anything I know about Super Saiyans is that nothing else matters. Super Saiyans just win. Forget plot development, forget logic, <laughs> forget anything. Super Saiyans just win. Yeah, and uh, I'm, I'm sure the other casters will just be, uh, you know, touching on their picks as well well, but a big one I think is uh, Shouty. I'm ex very excited to see him play to because uh, Admir it's Admirable's pick, I think, if I recall. So, uh, you know, I'm very, very excited to see that one. Uh, are there any other picks you think uh, really strike yourself from the other casters? I mean, Frodan picking Roger is a bold one because Roger has the most wacky lineup out of anyone, you would say. He's the one person that's really just tried to go all in on targeting Warrior, and his decks are the most untested, the most different from what you will see on ladder. Uh, what I will say is that Roger is flying the flag as the only non-rogue in this tournament, <laughs> which means he is the only player who can prevent Edwin Van Cleef being in the winning lineup of every single World Championship competitor. If you're playing that Tavern Brawl right now, you'll notice one thing is that there is a lot of Edwin in those World Championship decks, and Roger is the only person that can prevent the clean sweep here. Yeah, so we are almost getting ready to go now, so not too long left. But before we do, we do have a very, you know, a nice first time viewing for you of something very similar to a Hearth and Home video you may have recalled seeing not too long ago, but there's going to be a new one ready for you. So check it out. So, Blood Trail's going to have to get used to this real quick. You know, if he keeps putting in the results he's been putting in recently, he's going to be a real Hearthstone superstar and have to, you know, kind of live up to being one of the favorites and not one of the underdogs as we've seen him in the past. Yeah, let's take a look at the lineups here. We can see the double rogue ban. So we talked about there's going to be a lot of rogue bans. Well, yes, yes, there is. We can kick off right now with them. And a big talking point here, though, I think Bunny Hopper, no warrior subtle. So yes. missing one of the two all stars of the, the meta at the moment. Uh, and he one drop the plus one attack and rush, which means once Zoo has the carpet on the board and some mana to play some other minions, then your opponent often does not get that board back and it has to do something quite dramatic. And the six health of the magic carpet, it may as well be immortal in my mind, Sol, because you can never stick a minion to deal with it. And there aren't that many spells that deal six. There aren't, but Blood Trail has just found himself a very potentially convenient answer off the top with that Wing Blast. I think you just do it, you know, it's just hard cast Wing Blast on five mana and then swing with the weapon because Honestly, as such a minion-focused deck that Blood Trail is playing right now, I don't think he can afford to leave this alive. It only gets worse from here. I mean, he might be wondering how bad the punish can be here because it's not like he's developing minions of his own that, you know, the magic carpet will get value by rushing into. Oh. But at the same time, it's, it's again a huge flow of mana to not deal some form of damage to this magic carpet. It is, but... What I'm a little bit surprised at now is he could have explosive trapped. Yeah. The odds are that Bunny Hopper does attack, yeah. more than likely, and then next turn unleash Hyena Wing Blast with the high, uh, uh, the dog trading in right. to something, which, again, Bunny Hopper's not going to not play minions this turn. Mm -hmm. So maybe that was actually a setup if he played the explosive trap. Double time and now they're just trading plus one attacks. You can see here just the power of the lackeys, though. Bunny Hopper is gaining tempo while gaining resources in his hand. <laughs> which not fair. Very few <laughs> things are able to do that, and decks that are able to do that usually end up being pretty powerful. You, know, you look back to classic patron warrior, which was able to remove your board while spreading a bunch of 3-3s three across their own board and draw six cards in the same turn. You know, when you can do all of those things in rapid succession, 
you end up being pretty overwhelming for a lot of people to play against. And when you evolve a two drop into a two six with taunt, that's yeah. definitely a great step to go. Uh, the witchy lackey. Uh, we will have to. We will describe all of these for you in case you're not super familiar. But the witchy lackey basically does an evolve once on a target, so it costs one more mana than it would do. So. That was two witches lackeys, and the cobbled lackey deals two as a battle cry. So, uh, I, honestly, mm -hmm. even the bad lackeys, I'll do in air quotes that you can't see, uh, are still very powerful in their own right. Ha! <laughs> bad lackeys, he says. Some people say it's all, and they're only bad in comparison to the really good ones. Yeah. But yeah, this taunt has ended up being a little bit of a punish potentially for Blood Trail. Just, you know, really not giving him much flexibility in where his attacks can go. I see, I definitely see his thinking with the Unleash uh, plus Wing Blast combination with the Scavenging Hyena as a follow up. Um, and I think the Explosive Trap, Blood Trail's thinking might be he gets to preserve that for potentially another wave of removal afterwards if he needs it, instead of, you know, essentially two for one his Explosive Trap and his Unleash the Hounds on the same board. But he did allow for things like this to happen, right? He said to his opponent, all right, punish me. If you can, go ahead and punish me. Well, again, one of my worries is, well, what if Grim Rally came down and then the carpet seven? Right. And then so, you know, so like, there's right. so many things you have to consider and these boards can just snowball out of control. Mecharoo, well, great. The explosive trap goes on a Mecharoo. There's still a 1-1 one -one left. And then again, Grim Rally targets, uh, Evil Genius targets, so on, so on. It does look like a pretty powerful Grim Rally turn, but I imagine Bunny Hopper is looking to test the secret first. Mm. Deal with the explosive trap, and then you can uh, potentially just create a huge Grim Rally board to follow this up. Mm. And with the Witchwood Imp buffing health, it's like the 2 6 never even touched that explosive trap at all. And second Grim Rally. This could be the beginning of the end. Because plus two, plus two on the board that's already getting plus one attack from this magic carpet in yep. general is starting to get a little bit silly now. And this Unleash into Hyena has to do a lot this game to get something done. Yeah, and that's it. You know, it's the attack buff is going to be great just for Bunny Hopper to be able to increase pressure. But at the same time, it's the health buff that's really doing the work because he's pulling all of his minions out of range of being able to be pushed by, uh, by Unleash the Hound. Yeah, and just... The and just look at the just continued value and rotation of cards. And suddenly, this one drop deck yep. has a 4 6, a 2 5, and a 4 8 on the board somehow. Yep. And Blood Trail has a big fat nothing at this point. And there's not a lot he can really do about this. I honestly think he had to go quicker with the explosive trap into and just go into the Unleash Wing Blast get the hyena on the board and, and, and hope it was a good I think the explosive trap really did a lot on the turn where he could have played it though you know he, whether he played it or not that 2-6 taunt still ended up coming down to punish him it's I think true. it was just the, like, the just leaving the carpet up at all was a big problem for him now there is just wing blast trade into the 2-5 but Again, yes, it does something. It still leaves the two actual threats on the board is the big problem here. Well, Trail looks like he's deciding whether to give up his Unleash the Hounds alongside this as well, but he is also under significant pressure here because of the build of Bunny Hopper's deck, which is a little bit different than what we usually see. Uh, Bunny is actually playing Leroy and Double Soulfire in his deck, which is not necessarily the most common thing in the world, um, but it's something that I do very much like. I, I very much found myself playing against this zoo deck and stabilizing at kind of, you know, three to six health and just feeling totally fine because they don't have the ability to do those last points of damage. You know, eventually against decks that are able to fight back against you, they can get there with the, uh, the, the soul fires, which is potentially now yeah. what we're going <laughs> to see here. As long as one soul fire does not discard oh, the other, which it he does. Missed, he missed. Okay. Still not the end of the world, though, because these two one drops still gain plus one attack and rush, and the yeah. lackey can be aimed face to put Blood Trail to two health. Yeah. He can trade off one, uh, say, the Argent Squire or the lackey into the dog as well to just say, well, you've not even got Beast left on the board and still go. It's fine. Bunny shaking his head a little bit, head in hands, but honestly, I feel like getting that one out of the way is not the worst thing. If that's the most unlucky you're going to get this tournament, Great. we take those yeah. because you are still in an incredibly dominant position this game. He's opened the door, yes, for a minor miracle to come out from Blood Trail's side to be able to win this game. But that is what's required. 
And this is it now, very similar to just the power levels of how Master Shaw, to be honest, this magic carpet, because yeah. the minions from hand also act as board removal the turn you play them. When you're up though, showing some restraint, not going for the lackey this turn, no real need to. It still does the two off the top. As long as the carpet's well, alive, it will still put some pressure on. But that is going to be it. Average to be able to play out. Yeah, and, and the biggest thing though, really, especially in this matchup, is the Headhunter Hatchet does so well against the early game of Hunter yeah. that they just cancel each they other cancel out each other so out. hard yeah. because that three charges on that weapon right. is so lot like deals with so many waves of minions that you have to do something pretty big to, to stop it basically. Oh, I love it. I love it when you just hit the point of like, okay, I think I can kill him before he kills me if we both rush face. And if my opponent trades, well, that just gives me more time to kill him. So I actually love this turn from Bunny Harper. I like it too, but really just because he doesn't have other options based on what his hand oh. is telling him to do. Sometimes you have to just play to your hand. Yep. I think that's exactly what Bunny's doing. Big card we've not talked about yet, though, that would be extremely swingy is the Unleash the Beast, one of the new cards. It's basically yep. six mana summons a 5-5 five, five beast with Rush, and it's also a twin spell. Rigged! Which puts another what? copy what? in hand. What is this? And no, for those of you who not played any Hunter, Dire Frenzy does not say, you know, shuffle the minions to the top of your deck. It says shuffle them in randomly and randomly. Bunny Hopper's ripping them off the top. I mean, as amusing as it is, it's not even really what Bunny Hopper it's not wants good, to be no. drawing right now. <laughs> he wants to be drawing damage because you kind of look like this This game has split off in divergent parts very, very clearly. Bunny Hopper just pointed his kill command at his opponent's face. On the two turns, either side of that action from Bunny Hopper, Blood Trail has used his kill commands for board control. And because of that, Blood Trail is now slightly behind on life total, but he's threatening a huge amount of damage just in board presence. And that's the danger in a Hunter Mirror of flicking the switch too early and going for straight damage, is that you can just lose the race to minions. Uh, the problem now is, oh, maybe it's a problem, maybe it isn't, but Bunny Hopper can bail out of that plan right now. Uh -huh. He can kill, Com well, he can kill Command the Leot, get the secret active, and as long as he can survive one more turn, which bear in mind is just the Hog Seed and you have a Snipe, then he can play Zul'jin and think that that two, will get him in turn. Turn. He has nine mana. This turn. He has to survive the next turn from his opponent and then the turn after that. Yeah, the turn, the turn after that he can play Zul'jin. Okay. Is what I meant. It okay. survives one turn with Zul'jinless. Okay. Uh, and then he can play Zul'jin to re-equip secrets, maybe kill command some minions, uh, deadly shots in the pool as well. Mm -hmm. It's not doing anything in terms of gas for him though, really, is it? It's not, it's not pushing him forward towards winning the game unless he just rips both of the Zul'jin kill commands at his opponent's face. <laughs> is that not what you do all the time? <laughs> okay, <so? laughs> apparently not, no. Apparently I'm just not good at Zul'jin. <laughs> Look, just again, this hatchet alone is six damage. Oh, tracking could be big. Yeah, these hunter decks are a whole lot of nothing, aren't they? There is there's a lot not, of air in these there's decks. There's not actually a lot, of, a lot of beef in the middle. It, it feels like a deck of two halves, right? Where you have half of your deck is very powerful in one kind of matchup and half the deck is very powerful in the other. Because, for example, against Warrior, a lot of what you do doesn't matter until you get to the very late game and then you start Dire Frenzying your Tundra Rhino. And then it's very, very hard for Warrior to be able to keep up with that amount of burst damage coming at them. Um, but, you know, those cards, like we've seen, Bunny Hopper plays double Dire Frenzy. He's been trying to get good use out of that Dire Frenzy that was stuck in his hand pretty much this entire matchup. As it turns out, he immediately drew a bunch of one mana 4-4s four as soon as he used it, which is way above average result from what he ended right. up doing. But uh, on the surface, it should have been a fairly weak play for him because it's a fairly weak card in the matchup. And now, Bunny walking into Rat Trap. And he's just going to play the control game, taking that out with the kill command. Yeah, there was enough, I think especially with this snipe, there was enough flexibility to actually just help out to get to get him there. Yep. But, but like I said, Rat Trap, once that's pro, that's just six damage out of nowhere. And the kill command proco as well. Obviously, the hog steed's there now, but still. Um, it's just a lot of damage and, and one bunny hopper could not deal with. I would like to put my opponent at five or below this turn. Not only because 
of what we can see Bunny Hopper is likely to do next turn. Essentially, you know, Zul'jin will then start casting Rod of Roasting, essentially, the, the infinite <laughs> Pyroblast card. Just cast Kill Commands until someone dies. But also, Blood Trail himself has the opportunity to play Zul'jin next turn with Kill Commands in his spell pool as well. Um, so I think pushing damage here on Bunny Hopper can be huge for him. Hmm. So I think Animal Companion Explosive Trap Hero Power is the best. I think find out what your Animal Companion is. And then play Thunder Rider. That's pretty good too. Yep. Mainly because, uh, as this is, uh, going to put him down just to three, but my thought process was it's the most stuff that Zul'jin will yeah, recast. Here we go! So there's Deadly Shot, and then there's about 18 kill commands, but worryingly so, there are Dire Frenzies, which can target your opponent's minions. Yep, and there he goes. Uh-oh! Dire Frenzy hits the Leok. He would have needed to Dire Frenzy one of the one health minions and then hit it with a kill command. That's basically his only out at that point. A buffed kill command. Yes, and that's very true as well, yeah. Okay. Oh, two of those dogs aren't having any fun. No. Bunny Hopper's face sums it up. <laughs> Again on the dog? Hey! <laughs> Not <Okay. laughs> quite what was planned. No real need to partition resources. I guess there is a slight fear that Bunny Hopper could put Blood Trail on because there is specifically all these Leox in his deck that Blood Trail might hold back resources to play around Leox right. Unleash. But you can start to generate a pretty uh, robust read that your opponent might be sitting on Archdeeper Farm. Yeah, I think that's very fair with because there would two cards that have been held. If there was one card that's been held, it's like, oh, they just don't want to use this or drop an egg onto the board they can't probably Oh, you start doing maths on like whether Sea Giant has been playable at right, any point in this game. Yeah, but, but, but like with two, it, it, the likelihood is so small. Right. Oh, Grim Rally, okay. Just play out the, Solari the Solarium hand. Yeah, this Leok is a huge problem though. Yeah. But I don't think you want to waste these cards um, with, say, Flying Carpet. Flying Carpet also head. achieves very little this turn. This, this The tap generally surprised me. I, I thought, like, just ju very ju much with juggle you. a Mecharu Grim Rally, and now a Grim Rally is just going to go away. Yeah. That's the card. If Grim, if Grim Rally did not exist, this deck would not be good, in my belief. Agreed. I think, you know, the heart... The one card that you do need to look at is Magic Carpet. I think that if that sure. goes away, this deck's in serious trouble. But I, I agree with the sentiment. And also just kind of philosophically and logically, the life tap is weird, right? Because you spend two mana and two health to draw a card, which then causes you to, to discard a card. A card. Yeah. Um, that was playable. So, yes. So it just seems fundamentally illogical. Bunny Hopper. The Leoc Master. This Snake Trap as well, definitely nothing to sniff at in terms of just the way this matchup works. Although, is the consideration of a Sea Giant? I mean, it's you definitely have to think about it, yeah. Yeah, just, just give him a minute because if your opponent sort of cheats out two Sea Giants because you played Snake Trap, you might just die. Bunny Hopper, I feel like your opponent's got a little too much health up there. 21's a big number and I'd like to see it go down. He's taking two a turn from this 1-3, though. That's three turns worth of that 1-3 right there. He's on less health. For now. <laughs> Boom. Good bunny. Just a slam. No time for one drops. Didn't test the secret first, though, funnily enough. And I guess this is the argument for doing what Blood Trail did, is that he... By life tapping, he then gets another card held in his hand. That's the difference between the card he life taps into and the card that he doesn't end up playing, is that that card he didn't play could not be held in his hand and then turned into a legendary. I still don't like it, but I'll, that's probably the justification he will give you. Mm, I'm not getting overly sold, but I'm just not even going to count and say this looks like lethal to me. It looks like a big number, <laughs> yeah, and it looks like 21 to 16 on the previous turn is going to work out being fairly key here. Yeah. Has some damage to spare. There you go. Wasn't needed. Never mind. Yeah. But Bunny Hopper is going to take the win with the Hunter. Bunny Hopper looked about as sad to see that rope as any time in history. He was using every second available to him 
to try and find himself a win condition in this matchup, but that that rope appeared, and he just had this look on his face like, yep, I got nothing. Yeah, I, guess, I, 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 I guess I'm just going to play my cards. Yeah, I guess I have to do something. Yeah. It'll look really bad if I just rope out. <laughs> yeah, there's the little combo. That's the lawns in a <laughs> Weapons project. <laughs> that sounded Harrison. very patronizing. <laughs> the what? little combo. It is. We that's an adorable little combo you got there. It, it is a little combo. That's a little bit ador adorable. <laughs> adorable? There we go. It's actually uh, what we call admirable backstage. That's adorable. Well, adorable. Uh -huh. Aha. <laughs> now, pretty much has to be Astromancer. It is, but it's also a four drop Astromancer. So uh, nothing to particularly write home, uh, write home about. And now, Dream's there to just knock back the safeguard, but... Did he get two seven mana death wings with Mega Wind Fury in charge? And Torn. No. No, he didn't? Okay. okay. <laughs> just checking. Ziliax. Could be security rover, honestly, in that spot. Nah, okay. I think Ziliax, some attacks. Being the tunnel blaster, he is now going to lose a little bit of his board state. Harrison does bite the dust. Cheeky, though. There comes the Baron Geddon. Hmm. Considering I believe there's another Book of Spectres in the deck, not really the no, best he played one already. Oh, did he? Yeah. Oh, I'm, I missed it. Okay. Okay, so a really good Book of Spectres. Draw three cards. I Again, though, pretty much unable to get back onto the board now because these uh, even a second Astromancer would do nothing or nothing that's good enough. We can see there's still Warpath, there's still Execute, there's still Brawl. Super Collider is actually one of the cards we've not talked about, but a big deal in this matchup because the minions are so often roughly equal to, to power level that they do kill each other if you tap them once. Right. Three of the lowest curve minions in the deck. There were, I mean, there's just not. I think his remaining cards are his second Astromancer, which is kind of the one piece of gas that he has, a second Arcane Keysmith, and, and then Rebel. X. Rebel Bouncer? Is he not? Play, I feel like I one. saw two in his hand at some point, but I might be wrong. This story deserves a new ending. I like this as well. Uh, Blood Trail choosing to ignore his last card to make sure he can play Elysiana on a turn that he's not under pressure. Yep. Because a lot of the time, that's actually the only way you beat Elysiana, is that you put so much pressure on them that they're not able to do it. And I think Blood Trail did just pick he the did. Chef Nomi pick there. Chef Nomi, yeah. Okay. I should stop saying Nomi, because everyone else says, no says Nomi. But then I just think of a little gnome instead of a big panda. Fire War X seems fine, although so, oh, actually, no, never mind. It's Dr. Boom, he can charge Vex, never mind. Yeah. And then Elysiana goes back. <laughs> I don't know why 11. you want a 3 2 weapon when you have a charging robot dinosaur. Rushing. All right, the 3 2 point. weapon point. does have fair charge. Point. Fair point. Let me fix my face. Because that would be overpowered, obviously. They couldn't have <laughs> charge. Rushing them is entirely fair. Yes. Oh, Witch Doctor. Mm. I wonder. <laughs> May uh -huh. as well play it. I'd love it if he just dreams back the Elysian. <laughs> it's like, ah, have another one, whatever. Doesn't matter. Well, I called it as soon as that Dr. Boom appeared in Blood Trail's hand, but it does finally appear we can say with absolute certainty that we are going to be heading to a game five here because Bunny Hopper just does not have the gas remaining. Yeah, Blood Trail can almost close his eyes and play the cards that aren't Brawl, yeah. and he will be in a fine position in this game. Right. Not even close to being injured either, so it's not like there's a, a final chance, even a few turns ago, of Bunny Hopper really presenting a front of minions and, and maybe get, getting a sneaky lethal. Shut your eyes, Kaggar, Astromancer, two four drops are not going to save you from this position. Uh-huh. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. 
There we go. Blood Trail evens it up two and two. The hand to back all this up from Zoo is really what I've been looking to when I've been playing the deck. Okay, so if the trades happen and then the Scorch comes down, I believe Bunny Hopper is 100% safe. I don't think there's anything that can kill him from this point. Okay. I was just, in terms of how he makes the turn, right? Whether he goes for a safer turn with mirror images, say, for example, versus this turn, because it does leave the 3-1 up and his opponent's on, and he's on 10 health. It's a little bit scary because he's then on 7 automatically. Those juggles definitely weren't bad either. Well, he just fired five knives with a 3-1 <laughs> in play, so you're automatically wrong. <laughs> oh, okay. Wow. That's a good one. He has the mirror image behind that as well. <laughs> Is this going to be the sickest hold? Like you said, the deck's capable of it. That's the best thing. And with no Soulfires and no Leroy, yeah. if Blood Trail plays Archville and Rafarm, then suddenly Bunny Hopper is playing a mirror match, I'll say, in terms of value-based minions, except his deck is built for it, and Blood Trails is very random. Now, Raven, is, is it too easy? Is the fruit hanging too low right now? Um, Imagine if it was a Soulfire. OK. That's a very straightforward thing to imagine. It would mean Blood Trail would win. I rest my case, Your <laughs> Honor. I'm sure that's not how court goes. That's so you exactly can't be like, how court Imagine goes. this is evidence. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, uh, guilty? <laughs> but now, like, like suddenly, okay, Nozdamu, big drop. Imagine if Blood Trail has a giant as every card in the deck, right? An eight mana giant. Even that's not what random legendaries no, it, are. Not even. No, close. this is my point. Okay. And that's good. Okay. Right? He still gets beat by Bunny Hopper's deck. Sure. Is my point. Okay. Which means I don't know what he realistically has to draw to get there. Quickly, think of all the legendaries if there's any that deal four. Geddon would be sick. Geddon would be really strong. He's just, just choosing to roll the dice with his Dr. Morrigan here. Wait, what's the wording on Janelai? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, it, it works for Warlock, if that's what you're asking. Ooh. It absolutely works oh, for Warlock. If it happened. Yeah. Oh. Janelai into Ragnaros into deal eight to the face with all those minions on the board. Now, that would be a good way to kick off the world champs. But back in the real world, this is a real tough decision for Bunny Hopper, because right now, he can go face, he can set up lethal. This 5-5 five five is neutralized by the two taunts that he has in play, but it's super scary just to leave a 5-5 five five right. up. But if he chooses to trade into it, well, I mean, what if it's a Tyrion that then comes out, right? And then you have to trade through a Tyrion, your opponent has a 5-attack five, a five attack weapon anyway. So I actually like this Blizzard decision a lot. Yeah. Because now he is setting up that lethal for himself. Blood Trail needs to draw something that kills Bunny Hopper or is massively defensive. I think that was an Undertaker. That is an Undertaker. There's Life the tap. tap finds eight mana. Oh. I don't want to rub salt in the wound, but play some salt fires in your deck. Come on. There we go. Bunny Hopper takes the victory, and that's potentially two game wins off the back of Rafam B. The next match is going to be Killing All Day versus Language Hacker. And please take a seat. Hacker a lot leading up to the tournament, and he said that he just kind of made the wrong read for the event. He was so focused in his practice and his preparation on beating Token Druid. That's one you got to fear. Uh, Mossy Horror, though. Yeah, big deal. And Hagatha. Oh. So now Language Hacker, he got to the Mossy Harbor turn quite safe. It was the Hagatha scheme into this that made it a big deal. Uh, he often expressed that because of the Flame Imps, he didn't have time to get that point. So that would be why he killed them in the earlier game, just sustain the life total so that you're not under pressure, you're not under that Leroy threat at the end of the game. Yeah. So this is kind of a rough situation for Killen. Uh, Zoo, while it does have a substantial reload potential with Magic Carpet uh, to be able to get back onto boards or just 
kind of make a, a much more threatening board than otherwise they would be able to. It's just not really the game plan that, that Language Hacker's on. No. It's not, it's not fight with minions. It's fight with powerful spells and effects. Yeah. And then late game, I mean, he's got the late game in the bag. Hagatha generating spells every time you play a minion, which he does have a lot of late game minions with a ton of value, like Walking Fountain, also Shutter Walk. Yeah. Honestly, he doesn't even really need the effect from Hagatha. You need the Battle Cry and the five armor. That's yeah. <laughs> what you really need. The five armor and the deal through to everything is pretty sufficient to be able to deal with uh, pretty much everything that Wow, Thunderhead Lightning Storm available for Language Hacker now. And I think that is an official corner turn where Killen is not prob is probably just not getting back into this one. Yeah, I would uh, definitely agree with that. It does delay his Hagatha, but he's got Zilliax lined up in case something small comes out to stabilize. He's got Hex in case Killen all day were somehow able to get a Sea Giant on board. Doesn't have to worry about the uh, Arch Villain Rafam <laughs> just because he doesn't have it. Does anybody <laughs> really have to worry about that? Sometimes you do, but it's hey. very rare. <laughs> Sada would say it's never. Yeah, it's pretty much never. Let's say you're playing against another Zoo Warlock and you're both out of cards and at a healthy life total. You top deck Arch, Arch Villain Rafam, they top deck Soulfire. Who wins? Probably the Arch Villain Rafam. <laughs> but I had to dig for a very specific scenario in my mind. Yeah, let's say you're against Druid, you play a 7 8 taunt, and then they play Iron Bark Protector, an 8 8 taunt. Who wins? <laughs> We I just want to know what decks you're playing against on ladder that run Iron Bark Protect. <laughs> it's from that Discover 3. Uh, Crystal three Song minions. Portal, there yeah, you yeah. go. Big turn here for Language Hacker. Start chipping away with damage. It was Zilliax and Hex firmly protected. I think Killen is, uh, yeah, he's falling out of this one. Your deck is consisting almost entirely of one cost cards. So once you get to this point, it's a little bit worse. Killen, Killen didn't go so far. On the one cost card mechanism, it looks to me like he's got uh, 15 one cost cards in it. You know, a pair of Direwolf Alphas and such, the Hench Clan Hogsteeds. A little bit more focused on a couple value Yeah, only cards. half his deck. Yeah. But th it's just, th this is a situation where you don't come back from. Your whole plan is to end the game before your opponent has access to this. Yeah. And I think that's the reason he goes for it. Uh, going into Language Hacker's five minute turn, you know that Agatha's scheme is in the deck. I just don't think you can fear it that way. Yeah, I kind of like the hold on the Sludge Slurper. Uh, it does just present more tokens, which makes killing all days. If you had a second Sea Giant. Yeah. I actually like the hold on the Totem as well. From For the same reason. Here. Well, it's also just the Thunderhead space. True. Yeah. Like, you just don't, the Totem isn't going to do anything in this spot. Leroy's never killing you. I suppose Leroy into Evolve into a Reckless Rocketeer with Abusive Sergeant's Direwolf. Maybe something crazy shenanigans like that could get it done. Get in there and fight, maggot! It would take a miracle at this point, though. Well, he was going to play Hagatha, but now I'm looking at another copy of Mossy Harbor. Oh, well, it kills off his own Mossy Harbor, so... Yeah, it wants the effect as well. And uh, mind you, killing all day is at 9 health. Yep, just been chipped away. Yeah, the true form of control deck here. It's dismantle your opponent's assault and then slowly batter them to death as they're f tired and falling over from a nudge. And you'll notice a trend over the course of the weekend. Even when players are in the most dire of positions, they're probably not going to concede. This is not the tournament for it. No, I don't think. this is the world championship. This is the last tournament of the year. Honestly, this is the last tournament of HCT, of the Hearthstone Championship Tour, before we move over to the Masters program. I'm staying in every last second that I can. If anything, just to stay on that stage a little bit longer. <laughs> I love that stage. That's the place to be. And the frog has become an insect. Ah, the irony. The predator is that, becomes is that, the prey. Is that reincarnation karma right there? <laughs> like, ah, I ate insects your entire life, did you? Spirit of the frog. <laughs> Language Hacker 1-0 lead. 
damage. Oh, the Dire Wolf buffs up the 3-3 three, three as well. Excuse me. The Dire Wolf buffs up the 3-3 three, three as yes. well. So, so that's actually a pretty big swing. He can also throw the Mechroo oh, wow. on that, the side. That's a major swing, actually. Yeah. So I, I actually didn't spot that in my head, just the Dire Wolf process is one damage. And how, wait, how much would the Sea Giant cost after all this is played? Oh, well, let's find out. No, it's not going to be enough because he has to trade it in the Scarab Egg. So it would effectively be plus two minions. Four, three, two. Yeah, it'll be a two cost. And then he has to also trade off his four, three in the process, killing the scavenger. Train. So there you go. So that's the cheapest the Sea Giant's getting. Yeah. So he just plays the Mecharu alongside that. Next turn, he has Sea Giant plus Solarium to have another big reload onto the board. Yeah, and I think this was the turn for Language Hacker that was the critical draw moment. Unleash the Hounds had to be the draw, I think, for him to be in this game. Yeah. The old hero cards are rotated. Rexar cannot terrorize this this kind of position anymore. Yeah, and Zul'jin was discarded, so Language Hacker doesn't have that big late game I win card. Yeah, this is a big yikes turn if you're Language Hacker. Just gonna get picked away at this point. Yeah, Sea Giant five mana can Solarium. Oh boy. Whoa. Well, scratch the Solarium part. No. Yeah, you just you would so many of the cards just get discarded at this point. I think you just tap, tap giant. I think you Solarium load up giant. What if you can't load up? Uh, you can load tap. up. All right, you can load up. You can always load up. I don't like it. What do I know? Load, load giant. You do discard magic carpet, but at this point, with double C giant in hand. I, Screw magic carpet. Yeah, I don't think you need magic. Get him out of here. Yeah, shut up. Somebody shut that magic carpet up. Protect the sea giant. The new VIP. That's right. He's wearing one of those ship wheels as a belt buckle. If that gives you any perspective of how big that is. Maybe it's a tiny ship, but <laughs> yeah, it's all relative. Because in, in my eyes, he looks smaller than the Flame Imp. Look, it takes eight Joey bots to kill a Sea Giant, all right? You can't even have eight minions in play. Mm -hmm. What do you even do? Uh, well, I mean, this game's wrapped up at this point. I, Language Hacker, his, his critical moment has passed. It was the last turn, and Unleash the Hounds was the draw. You play uh, Tundra Rhino. Just to maybe threaten the fact that he has a bunch of charge beasts in hand. I mean, what? Yeah, but then the Tundra Rhino dies, and then what? Rinse, repeat. Well, you force the trade, so he can't kill it on board. Yeah, but that's a rinse, repeat scenario. I, that's what I'm. That's what I'm getting at. Is like, you're not getting past this one. Yeah. Like you're alive this turn. Sometimes. Some solid mana utilization here. Yeah, I th the one thing for killing, really, I think, is just to think about, is there any weird Unleash the Hound scenario that can kill me? That's it. I don't think that there is. Well, this is happening. These cards are being played. Yeah. And then you evaluate from there. It tells me killing's not... That's a... Oh, you can't play the giant and then do it. Okay. That's not a missequence. You have to be able to do that in order to uh, preserve the uh, mountain giant's current mana situation. You kill that minion first and then juggle. You can't play the sea giant. Yeah. No juggles to be had. So he can direwolf alpha and unleash the beast, which allows him to take out one of the sea giants. And then he can hit it to the knife juggler, and he's alive at one health. So, use of sergeant. Leroy. Next turn. <laughs> One more turn. Leroy, Leroy it is. is. Killing, going to tie it up here. We got a 1-1 one -one score at the World Championship in this one. Killing able to get the Warlock deck through. Uh, and I don't think that's unexpected. I it's only so, one bomb. Now you can make it three. So the fact there's only one actually makes it a little bit better because you, you make less minions for your opponent to do something yeah. with. Okay, then. This is a complicated game. There's a lot going on here. And it's like a weird little tiptoe situation. I don't know what to do. 
This would be a good time for a master plan. Scrap Hound, probably the take in this situation. Yep. Oh, I love that. Oh. I think likely to hang on to the Clockwork Goblin here as well, given the way that he played last turn. Oh. I don't think so. You're not playing into any other secrets. So now you know it's Rat Trap uh, very likely. Yeah, or Freezing. Oh, no, he, he checked for Freezing oh, with the Hero boy. Power the previous turn. And you saw Language immediately reach for Tundra Rhino when he drew Dire Frenzy. Well, Dire Frenzy also dilutes the deck, so you're less likely to draw bombs. And that's what language has to think about. It's like, what chance do you have to draw that many in a row? Do you trade off the Alec in this situation to prevent that uh, that bad luck factor from being a big case? Language is at 19, and his secret's a rat trap. It's not a defensive secret. He's also looking at nine damage on the board. So that'd be the break point for two bombs. Oh, this is a weird spot. But he's likely to trade over the Augmented Elec here. Right now, there are five bombs in the deck. I believe. He swung, one of them's been drawn. One of them's he swung two times with the first wrench caliber. So that was two. He's drawn one. So there was one in the deck. Then he played Augmented Elec, swung with the wrench caliber. That added two. Face for Language Hacker. And that puts killing in. Oh, this quite is quite a pickle. This is really tough. So he could play. I think he you could lead trade, an assembly here. He could trade in the Clockwork Goblin, okay, then. play the Blastmaster Boom, rush all of the bombs into uh, the Tundra Rhino, and then go push that six to face. He's likely to get a lot of face damage. I'm thinking of defense in this spot. But if he kills You're thinking a counterattack, and I like it. If he, if he's thinking, if he hits into the Tundra Rhino too many times with bombs, it kills it early. Then he's left with a wider board of bombs and is weaker to unleash. He doesn't have really any ways to game armor here outside of the Scrap Hound, which is only two. Oh my. Yeah, I think it's push. Wait, when you're left with extra bombs here, you can four path them away too. Like if that happens, if Tundra Rhino die too early. Oh boy. All right, attack, attack, war path. Uh, you need a warpath. Warpath could be lethal. Holy smokes. So he's got five bombs in the deck. Look at Language Hacker's face right now. So Three one, damage, One bomb damage. drawn. One bomb drawn. Five bombs? This is a one in It's a one four? in four. It's Shiverfly. There's no Tundra Rhino. Zol'jin. He, ah! he could die from the Zol'jin because it could track his bombs. It has a flare loaded up as well. So he's drawing one card with the flare, but he also could dire frenzy and shuffle more in his deck to dilute the bombs in his deck. It, it targets the Alex right now. It could target the Alex, but he also has an unleash in the pool. So it all depends on the order here. He could track into bombs. Literally oh, anything boy. could happen. So unleash for that's good. It makes it more likely, but oh. one of them died. Language hacker shaking his head. Track. He tried to do a bomb. Bomb. bomb! He's five armor though. So he's down three. So he's got, he can one bomb left. So he did Dire Frenzy's Hound. That's a good thing. Shows the rat trap. Flare into a bomb? No, it's still green, so he's not dead. Dire Frenzy's the opposing minion though. It's gonna live. March shot hits the own hound. And hands full now, so no more bombs can get drawn at this spot. But there's nothing Language Hacker can do to live. Wow, what a weird game. What a cool game. Yeah. So the reason why I do like the Northshire Cleric uh, this turn is because Killing All Day wanted to cycle as aggressively as possible to find the second Grave Horror. Because three Grave Horrors is just worse than four Grave Horrors. Usually true. Mind control tech. Boom, found it. What about the masses here? Does the math work out differently? Um, no, they all just... It's a little different, I think, but... Three, not... No, three is better. Is it three better? Because two attack each other. I don't know. There's so many iterations. No, no. Three is... Three, three they all die. 
Yeah, four they all die too, I'm pretty sure. There's a lot of different ways. Three, one of them go. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> there it is. All right, no more card draw this turn. So it's, you know, three of Grave Harbors is going to have to be enough. Three Massive Grave Horrors. Uh, looks awful in this spot. Three Grave Horrors silence the Tundra Rhino. Yeah. See you go. Pretty good looking turn. Yeah. Actually, maybe three Ooh. Grave Horrors and a Gadget Sand Auctioneer and a News. Well, I, the rest of the stuff is up for debate. I mean, that's that's the debate point. Nah, he can't do that. Why not? Uh, because he wouldn't have mana for Gadget Sand Auctioneer. So it's just three Grave Horrors and a News. Oh. Yeah, I like the trimming off of the uh, North Shark player. Not doing anything right now. Now, <laughs> just mitigate, unleash the hound stuff. Double seance. Effectively, two mana faceless manipulators in this spot. Yeah, man, that is that is a horrible looking board. Language hackers in trouble. Major trouble. Let's see. Does Leok help him out here? Oh, Dire Frenzy. Let's get some more. Get some more of those Tundra Rhinos. It's got to stay alive. Your opponent just put 24 attack in play. You have 29. You're good. You're good. That's not okay. You good? That's bad news. <laughs> really bad news. All right. Let's uh, let's do the Leok math. So you can Leok <laughs> still no. get unleashed the hounds. Well, you unleash the hounds first. Yes, you can unleash first because you want them to be next to the direwolf alpha yeah. and have the Leoc buff them as well. So then you can clear off. At that point, you'd be able to clear off two Grave Horrors. Yeah, because you have 17 attack loaded. Mm -hmm. Wait, play. no, no, because each hound would be, yeah, each hound would be three. Ooh. Oh, so you overkill by one. You overkill by and one. And then you have the other, okay, you still clean. <laughs> Wait a minute. There's got to be different ways to do this. This is so much math. I don't know, honestly. There we go. Two of them dead. Killing two turns away from Chef Nomi. Can make it one turn if he wants to. So he, the cards left in his deck, he has uh, one Grave Horror still left. And then the last card is a Holy Smite? Yeah. The, the, the last card, aside from the Grave Harbor, is just meaningless at this point. It is all focused in on Chef Nomi consider. and Grave Harbor and how Killen just delivers lethal anyway. pressure in this spot. Yeah, so this he's is looking for the big one. Doesn't find it. He's going to use this opportunity to push seven. Yeah, this also takes away a Dire Frenzy on a Tundra Rider. It also like draws him his Grave Harbor. Yeah, so in fatigue spot, but <laughs> Language Hacker does not have the damage to really take care of that. Unlike a lot of the other decks we've seen, there are no kill commands in Language Hacker's deck. Yeah. So uh, Language Hacker has two turns because Chef Nomi's coming down next turn. He has no way to kill him. He's going to die. Yeah. I just don't think it's there. I can't think of Hunter spells that make a difference in this spot, but maybe there is one. Nope. Killen is effectively at 13 health because of the fatigue, but he has the, one of the turns of hero powers as well. Yeah, it doesn't even matter if Language Hacker kills this board. Any means on this board because it's just replaced by a 6-6 six, six when Chef Nomi comes down next turn. Yeah. You need that that Hunter spell they never, ever made, which is uh, Frost Trap, and it slows the animation of all minion attacks, and if they don't connect with face in time by the turn ends, they don't attack at all. <laughs> Whoa. It slows the animation by like 96% in my head. But yeah, just, there was no way out of this. Killing all day just had the massive draw turns, you know, in back to back situations and wiped out a Tundra Rhino with a Wild Pyromancer. Maybe he's going to try and bluff here with an explosive trap. Like I said, it's not even worth killing off any of these minions just because it's going to be replaced by a 6 6 with Chef Nomi. And Language Hacker's dead. <laughs> is there a weird Zuljan turn that could matter here? Uh, the only thing is that maybe he's going to try and play around Misdirection. 
Like, that's weird? Yeah, I would, I would just run the four in right now. You run the four in, then you only take four. You go up to... You, uh... Hmm. Go up to 13, you take four or three fatigue damage next turn. You take two next turn. No, he's been in fatigue. He took two this turn, didn't he? No, he just took one. Oh. That's his first draw with uh, no cards in the deck. Okay. Mm. Yeah, you're right. I said three fatigue, and I meant the so one plus the two. So he'd be at 11, which would effectively be nine with the hero power from Microtacker. There's no way he'd die. But nonetheless, good sequencing just in case, I guess. <laughs> music from that. Well, Language Hacker isn't going to get out of this one. Killing all day takes the series three games to one. And is that one match away from moving out of the groove? Language Hacker drops down to the lower portion. Next match is the third match of today. Next match is going to be S N Jing versus T G Xiao T. Okay, players, please shake your hands with each other, and then we'll shake hands with each other. 好，请就坐 ，Please take a seat. Analyze uh, some of the weird and unique decks to the tournament, and you know, interestingly enough, this may sound like a quote weird deck because of the representation, but Token Drew is not being brought by many people despite its popularity. Yeah, we, yeah, we talked about the uh, the miscreant, you know, the lackeys being a big source of this deck's power, and they definitely are. But Raiding Party is the glue that actually makes everything fit together. And we see this this turn is really dem you know, demonstrative of exactly that. He not only gives you card advantage, he not only tutors up a powerful weapon, but you know just this massive tempo swing thanks to these Dread Corsairs being pirates that you're pulling out of your deck. Suddenly, Xiao Ti, we were talking, oh, he might be able to piece together this burst damage he needs. Sorry, you're dead next turn, and there's two taunts in the way. Well, that backstab gives Xiao Ti the ability to activate the raiding party and pick up his own Dread Corsairs to add meat to his front line. But, you know, at that point, are you just playing the I'm going to lose a little bit slower game? Mm. But then I don't even know a way for him to pull himself out of this situation. You know, there's always like the play to not lose or play to win. What is the play to win line? I, I don't see one right now. You know, the, this is a position where Xiao Ti, you know, he can dig, find his own uh, Dread Corsairs like you mentioned, find Waggle Pick, kill one of the opponent, opposing Dread Corsairs. But then you know, he's still just losing his own board to Jing's board, and then doesn't have much of a follow-up. Maybe there's, I mean, Leroy, you can't even kill the whelps because there's taunts in the way. Right. Whatever he does, oh, is he still going with Myrus? Okay. I mean, I think Desperate Times calls for Desperate yeah. Measures. And finds, ooh, some air in the form of the second raiding party. I'm out of cards. Uh, and backstab plus SI does kill one of these. Right. There's 10 damage on the other side. Jing just picks up a little bit extra damage. Savagery here is actually yeah, super savagery. good. Yeah, One cost, kill your guy. So... Jing has pretty much his pick of the litter, whatever he wants to do to establish firmer board control. Mm. But the first thing that's in his mind is, what combination of cards could I potentially right. lose to a nine mana if my opponent, say, has preparations and uh, all the damage in the world? Yeah, that's that's really... Jing is in the position now, given that Xiaoti has played uh, the unstable element that he just needs to Ow. not die, right? Right. And uh, he doesn't... You know, he could... Oh, oh. Reign of Toes is too expensive, though. Yeah, he doesn't have preparation to go with it. Circle of Healing doesn't do anything. I mean, Rain of Thrones is the card I think you take here, simply because, yeah, it's just so powerful if you do set it up. Right. I mean, he could also, if he wanted to just backstab Phantom, oh, but I, I, you know, he could also just trade one of these, then Master of Disguise something. Yeah, I think you want the maximum and board pressure seven. because you just want to threaten to kill your opponent if they don't do anything to the next turn. Uh, the bait is, I think, if Jing wants to swing with the weapon. Yeah, it looks which, like he's just going to trade. Yeah, I don't know if swinging the weapon here is really needed. Yeah, there's no, there's no real reason to, to give up your possible taunt here, lose your weapon. You just prep raiding party, raiding party. 
<laughs> sure, prep miscreant. All right, he's gonna prep out the miscreant. But he can get a ethereal. It's true. Yeah, there is. That's one of the crazy things is that there's always these these little things that might happen. Faceless right. plus goblin lackey does give him okay. ability to clear something off, but I still don't think that's gonna be enough to get him back into this. Find Ghost a two-two -two -two murloc. Yeah, it, it seems almost pitifully. Uh, you know, well, I was gonna say he can shadow step the miscreant, and replay it. Dig, yes, dig although for you more. lose the preparation. Right, you lose your preparation effect. Yeah, was, I think you if, gotta do it. If he did hit Ethereal Lackey into Vanish, right. he could have at least gotten, the, gotten rid of the board with the, the, the preparation effect. Two Goblin Lackeys allows him to rush onto the board. And yeah. Faceless Vac Lackey has pretty good options for two mana minions. Potentially could change it. We're talking about Armor Gain, Lifesteal. Alright. Well, kind of funny. In a way, Underbelly Fence making an appearance on the other side. Shati is digging for something. Uh, I mean, at this point, he's actually running out of time because he can't actually clear off yeah, everything. There's, I think there's no is, way to make this work. I think this is dead here for Shati. He's looking at lethal right on the board. I That's going to do it. Game one goes to Ching with his Thief Tempo Rogue. I suspect, though, that we, you know, we may see Jing look for a... You know, an opportunity to get the evil down here. He doesn't have much time, though. Yeah, he's gonna go ahead and evil genius. Yeah. Okay, Goblin Lackey and Witch's Lackey. I like this plus attack. Yep. Uh, on the Magic Carpet, just make it more resilient uh, to any kind of trades that can come down. Yeah, just building out a wide board. Xiao Ti does have one copy of Fan of Knives in his Rogue deck. Fan of Knives right. was a card that didn't really see a ton of play uh, in the style of Tempo Rogue, but with that rise in popularity, or at least expected popularity, of uh, Token Druid, we've started to see Fan of Knives come in at least one copy, sometimes two copies, into these decks. Uh, and that's definitely something that's on Jing's mind as he, uh, as he sets his board up. That's right. It's very next level in the sense. Uh, a lot of players, when we were interviewing them, said, I hope that players are smart enough to know that Token Druid was not good for this tournament. <laughs> and it's like, well, that's you know a fairly interesting thing to assert because a couple people did actually bring Token Druid. And it ends up being weird because Xiao Ti ends up playing against a Token Druid player. <laughs> and he, he kind of hedged a little bit, right? Yeah. There's, that, there's that single copy of Fan of Knives, which you probably wouldn't play if you didn't expect there to be uh, at least right. a, a decent number of token decks. Because Phantom Knives, frankly, is not that good most of the time against this zoo deck because of the presence of double Grim Rally. Yes. If you do get a prep Phantom of Knives, it can you know, be uh, enough early on to kill some of their stuff. And now, Cheap Shot kind of budget fan of Knives here. Does give Shotzi uh, a little breathing room. Yeah, just a life But total. not a lot of life to work with. Yeah. And it's going to get a little bit worse Ooh, before it gets better. Another evil genius drawn by Jing. Yeah, the second genius here is not nearly as impactful. Part of what makes Evil Genius so good is the fact that um, you can use the lackeys immediately with the rush, but Shanti has nothing to rush down. Shanti's yes, conceding the board. But still being able to go wide in the board here is pretty powerful. You know, your opponent has just used this this cheap shot, which you know, wasn't even in his deck, but right. you know, did give him the ability to, to clear off some of your uh, your wide board here. And you know, now the ability to sort of reload that. And you know, having a second magic carpet and uh, more yeah, more one drops in hand does give him you know, an insurance policy against Xiao Ti getting a board himself. Cobalt oh, Lackey and Ethereal Lackey dealing damage and discovering a spell. A lot of spells that you could get here for Warlock that'd be great. We're talking about Grim Rally, Soul Fire. I'll take any direct damage. Just gonna play the second carpet. Interesting. Yeah, I think he, he didn't want to make himself very vulnerable to a fan of Nice comeback. Yep. Waggle well, this, pick. With, with two carpets in play, you know, his his board is very solid against most of the removal of the, the rogue has, right? The fan of knives just mentioned. It, what's, what's this going to be like? Double backstab, double eviscerate to clip both of these? Because his hand is just three things that uh, enable these to, uh, yeah. to you know, or rather are enabled by these. And also the fact that he has the witchy and lackey in hand. If Xiao Ti tries to use damage over multiple turns to clear off, the magic carpets, he could just evolve them into a four drop. Right. Um, I think if he went wide, a prep fan would have been pretty. Good. So I like what Jinx had that. Oh! 
Venomizer, but it doesn't have anything to give it rush. Yep. He should he should pay better. Double time, double pay. That that Venomizer, <laughs> he'd be getting in there right now. Well, he has two SI7 agent um, combos available, but it's still not going to be enough. <laughs> trying to find some way for Shouty Gad. This looks like he's going to shadow step. The face okay. is lackey for another attempt here. Is he going to pump the Van Cleave to the skies? Oh, that, that gives him a lackey. Yeah. All right, he's going for a big Van Cleave. Eight, eight. Yep. There's five damage on the board, though. Yep, two with the Cobalt lackey. And six, seven, eight, nine. Ethereal lackey, I think, is how you want to start this off, because right. if you find... Soulfire is lethal. Yeah, Soulfire, I think, kills your opponent, right? There's five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes. Yeah. Grim Rally is also lethal. Yep. So a lot of things you can find to just end the game right now. Jing goes digging. Oh, Grim Rally here is we go. there. So I think we're, he may just be doing the math here, figuring out, okay, how does this how does this add up? Yep. And uh, he's going to find out it does add up. Assuming the, the nine count was correct that I trusted Yom, but I think it's I think you're right. Yeah. Can't see the board right now, so I can't really count. Yeah, there's one two power. Uh, well, yeah. One two power, a one, another two power, and one one power. So yes. we're going to see abusive. Five. Fight, maggot. Lackey to the face. And the Grim Rally will seal the deal. Nice to do it. And uh, Jing is going to go to a 2-0 lead over Shouty. This was an upset. Temple Rogue should have the 55-45 edge against Zoo Warlock. Shouty is floundering right now. Oh, to prevent this kind of aggression. Yeah. And, and I think it also has replicated results even on the ladder. Uh, shortly after the decklist release, you saw multiple people hitting top 10 legend with this exact decklist as well. Yeah. Quickly. And this just scale hide. I love this tech, especially because there's two taunts behind it. Being able to land Dire Frenzy after that, oftentimes, is swinging enough to end yeah. the game. And here, you know, we see Shouty. Okay, he's going to pick apart two of the, the Wisps as well as two of the, uh, the right. Treants that come off of them. Now, Zheng, you know, still a big hand, in part thanks to that Acorn Bearer, uh, but not really a great opportunity to, to get damage in. He does have the Hogsteed Savage Roar play right now, which lets him clear off most of this. And the nice thing is that Jing has the resource advantage. Right. The Forest Aid, a, a, a new rare spell from the, the Rise of Shadows expansion, has twin spells summon five 2 2 tree ants. That just gives you two turns to play stuff, and your opponent has to counter it. And remember, you know, there's not a lot of ways for uh, Hunter to conveniently access removal, not right. without Unleash the Hounds. Uh, Rex are rotated out. And it's like, how else are they supposed to get it? They're not playing explosive trap. Yeah, uh, yeah. The uh, uh, Forest Aid was sort of quietly, I think, one of the, the cards that made Token Druid a threat, because in a lot of cases, you know, you're like, okay, well, there's no more ultimate infestation. You know, Nourish got nerfed. You're not really playing a ramp sort of card draw style of deck anymore. You know, how is how is this going to work? Sure. Um, and uh, the Forest Aid gives you, you know, while it is expensive. This really powerful reload. You know, yes, your opponent can, can wipe it away with like a Hellfire or some sort of AOE, but you're already forcing them to have AOE all the way up to this point. Wow. Uh, Jing, of course, utilizing Swipe makes sense too. It's a little bit better to hold on to Savage or as the, the, the game scales now they draw the Forest Aid, but how big is that Zildjian draw? Uh, it is a 10 mana Zildjian. It's pretty big. <laughs> it's very uh, important for Shouty to have long-term game plan. Yeah. And the reason why that Zildjian is good, not because of just the spells and you're able to destroy the board potentially with, you know, casting Unleash the Hounds and etc., is that you're able to draw even more cards further. Yeah. Uh, so it keeps his hand economy mm -hmm. equal to that of Jing's. And in my opinion, having Zildjian and just play that matchless call, we have a real Hearthstone game in our hands. We do, though, you know, looking at how these, these next couple turns are going to play out right now, you know, Xiao Ti, he can play, for instance, he can play the Hyena and the, the Hatchet and kill uh, one of the Treants and the Murloc. And then, you know, Jing has the opportunity to kind of reload a bit. And uh, Zhao Ti, he'll only be able to buff the Hyena once if he does choose to play it. So he's not really going to have, right. you know, the opportunity. I think he'll probably hold on to it and combine it with the Thunder Rhino. Yeah. But he won't necessarily have minions to go along with it if he, if he, uh, he does. Yeah, perhaps the Shimmer Fly is a little bit better, so you might get some I think he just Hero Power here, because he, he can play the Shimmer Fly alongside the Thunder Rhino right. next turn anyway. If he wants, he can play Shimmer Fly, Thunder Rhino, and Hyena next turn, which is, makes the Hyena better as it is. That's true. 
Uh, and also, Ooh, you're probably not gonna landscaping is a draw. Thargoth landscaping is available for Jing this turn, and not only you know does that give Jing a big board with the Savage Roar in his hand, but also sort of forces the uh, the removal on the Vargoth to prevent more uh, you know possible AOE buffs uh, or minion generation here from uh, from Jing. So Zhao Ti, you know, he has that Zuljin, but that's still several turns away, and this is a lot of pressure. Okay, Mark Shot, he can kill, he can Mark Shot Vargoth kill with a weapon and hope to find a multi shot or an explosive trap. Right, the danger Those are, is that there's a lot of ways for Token Drew to buff their board yes. to get out of that range. Well, if he does find, say, a multi shot, he could kill two of them at least, but you do still leave three minions in the board, which uh, is pretty scary. It's still very scary. With a lot more reload to come. Right. The Forest Aid. Next turn, we'll just put out and, more tree. Yeah, that's that's why I was saying I felt like the Zuljin didn't seem that impactful because you're you're kind of in a position where you know, your 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 opponent's going to be forcing wave after wave of stuff you have to deal with before Zuljin will even be on mine. It, I feel like it, I feel like it's a bit too late. So Mark Shot will dig for Shao T. He finds Arcane Shot, Rapid Fire, Cybertech Chip. So you know, the Arcane Shot is removal for one of these minions. Sure. Quickly. All right, gonna chip away a little bit, but that's gonna be Jing starting his turn with four trees. Roar alone is ten. Plus hero power. Plus hero power. That's that's lethal, that's right? Lethal. Savage roar, hero power. Are you serious? And that's just, uh, I think Jing's going to do a little bit of math here. Yeah. But 10 plus 8 plus 1, that is 19, and that is Zhao Ti's life total. Token Druid gets over the hump, and this is a massive victory, not just for Jing, but there's also another token player, Dru yeah. uh, Druid the player in the tournament, that was not sure about the performance. And I'm sure Ike in the back room is fist pumping right now. Yeah, and uh, you know, this Jing with a 3 0 victory over Xiao Ti. Xiao Ti heralded by many as you know, the best player in China, perhaps the best player in the world, goes down three straight games to Countryman. Jing, the aggro specialist from China, takes down Xiao Ti, moves on to the winner's match. Next match is the fourth match of today, and the match is also from Group B. And this match is Muzzy versus LF Ye Ying. Come to the center and shake your hands. Thank you, and please take a seat. American and European players have generally been favoring Control Warrior, uh, whereas the Eastern players, uh, Chinese and uh, Asia-Pacific players, have generally gone with Bomb Warrior. There are one or two exceptions to that, but it is, for the most part, a very, very yeah. clean split uh, for you. It's honestly, although a lot of these games, especially this mirror match, like you may have played at home, look very straightforward. Oh, just, just hit them in the face, yeah? They're, they're actually so strange because it's backwards Hearthstone. I won't play minions because it benefits my opponent for me to play minions. And it's such a weird way to look at the game, but the second you slip is when you lose. If you go back and look at games you played previously, you will lose the games you try and play early minions like this. And now timing from Muzzy. Muzzy's not just going to sit around and not play minions forever, but he's now overloading the board. Three minions at once means this waggle pick isn't just going to uh, take out his entire board state, which is an enormous amount of damage, and now Yu Ying has to answer this back. It's like, oh, just setting up two turn lethal from 30. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's it's so silly. And now, that, like you said, it's just all about tempo. And the problem is Ewing now has to respond and gain somehow. And Rogue is a pretty good class right now. But when, as you said, Muzzy's timed it extremely well to go wide, it is very difficult to do. And suddenly, Eviscerate's been used, Backstab's been used. There's a 3-3 three, three, or two 3-3s three, three now on the board. And Ewing's going to have to swing this weapon and doesn't actually kill off the 2-1. Yeah, I like it. I don't really see what benefit killing the 2-1 there gives you. It protects your 3-3 three, three from Fan of Knives, I guess, is the number one reason. But, you know, you take an additional 2 in the process to try and prevent 6, but you're also not pushing the damage. So in terms of, like, net damage loss going uh, sw swinging both ways, you just you kind of break even if your opponent has the worst possible answer. 
really nice just tucking that hench clan in behind the, the Corsair as well because it's normally a target that everyone's used to seeing it on turn three. But now, even late, it's kind of awkward to deal with outside of an eviscerate, and every point of damage that your opponent doesn't use on your face makes mm. you just that little bit safer, especially when I half joked and actually was it was true, uh, was Buzzy was setting up just basically a two-turn burst yes. to actually kill Yu Ying up. And this is where uh, there's been a lot of criticism of um, Hench Clan Thug, and it's not a card I personally favor in Rogue because it uh, oh, clashes with really what you're trying to do with the deck. You know, when you have Hench Clan and Waggle Pig down together, Hench Clan wants you to attack with your weapon every turn. But if you attack with your weapon every turn, you're going to bounce your Hench Clan Thug back to your hand and completely waste your own time. This is the turn, this is the kind of hand where Hench Clan Thug is incredible still in Rogue because Yu Ying can continue to buff this uh, Waggle Pig with green skin and keep trying to push damage with Hench Clan Thug. And if it gets to the point that you've gone through three charges of Waggle Pick, well, your opponent's probably dead if you've yeah. still got a Hench Clan Thug on board. So the bouncing it back to your hand part of the equation is just not relevant. And this is the difference now. Yu Ying can hold on to that pick, whereas Muzzy cannot. And also, Yu Ying does have a sap available to him, which means at any point, mm. he can just skip a minion for, for Muzzy, if there's a top, you know, and of course there in the way, Muzzy had to trade a six attack weapon in. You can just go, oh no, get back in the hand, boom, there's more damage to face. Right. And this, now there's a health feed. This Waggle Pick number two plus the Leroy on Muzzy's side is representing lethal over the next two turns here, Ooh. though. But because the green skin's been dropped down as a threat, Muzzy can't develop the pick here and clear the green skin without taking damage, which is what he'll be trying to do. Can he. Hmm. I was wondering whether you can ever get away with like some way of rationing the resources where you deadly poison this turn so you can find a knives trade, go face with that damage, and then maybe over the next turn pick into Leroy yeah, afterwards. It's, 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 it's very long-winded. Right, it still costs you an entire turn, which does feel pretty bad. It's just, muzzy spot. you could just be dead to Leroy mm. yeah. next turn, which is why I think the kill on the green skin's huge, but I don't know if there's time to do anything else well, that's I good. Well, I think in Muzzy, if, you, if you're in Muzzy's shoes right now, you are a turn behind, right? Even if your plan is Waggle, pick up, go phase, kill him with Leroy the turn after. If Yu Ying has Leroy, you are a turn behind that working anyway, so you just lose. So I think if you're Muzzy, you have to live in the world where your opponent doesn't have Leroy because that's the world that you can win in. Right. Okay. We're just going to go for it. It's going to set it up and say, let's go see who has what. And we can see that Yu Ying, in fact, does not have Leroy right now. The Vis would do it, though. Oh, is that one? Oh, if he if he bounces the deck hand or the SI, then he will have lethal. I like those odds if I was Yu Ying right now. Yep. And as I said, the matchup is absolutely <laughs> savage. And it just became a face wall this time with just those two very oh, powerful the temple players. Oh, the green skin's green. Oh! The one out of three bounced. The one that Yu Ying did not want to see back in his hand. Oh, and that now, is brutal. And now, I don't think there's anything he can even do from our point of view. Nope. That is savage for the Chinese player. 67% chance at lethal. Saps the SI, and all that means is that Muzzy doesn't have to go through the rigmarole of trading it to guarantee his Leroy bounce, and he doesn't even need that. He's just got straight up lethal. <laughs> Absolutely insane there, and you see how close, especially what not exact 30 cards for 30 cards, but the mirror match becomes when those turns are played out. And both players, I think, played very well and yes. had their timing points down to, to almost perfection. And Okay, Yu Ying, show me what this hunter can do because you've drawn a lot of cards, you've got a lot of beasts, and now you've got Unleash into Hyena. Now, the question is, if this is not good enough, right. then surely the deck is not good enough, right? right? Because this is what it is built to do, nine times out of ten. Gonna have six health on this Hyena yeah. when it's all said and done, I believe, yep. Can reduce the power on board quite dramatically because the minions being killed are direwolves, then the chances of trading up is uh, pretty low. That's not gonna get there. He needed exactly Flame Imp off the top to be able to clear this off this turn with the Magic Carpet. Uh, abusive Oh, uh, Abusive well. would have done it as well. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Ooh. The Solarium was going to allow him to find those options as well still. Something you'll like. Go on. I didn't realize because it was a one-off. A cheeky Soulfire yes. in this list yes, from, I know. From, from us. Isn't it a beautiful thing? <laughs> yeah. 
Also, the Microtech controllers as well, not super standard, but you see it creeping in recently, like last few days. Actually. Yeah, there's a lot of players saying that, like, Microtech controller plus C Giant is just kind of like the package, you know? Right. Like, those cards should go in decks together if you're trying to build a C Giant deck and if you're looking to kind of prey on other token -y decks by, you know, counter swinging against them with C Giant, then that's kind of the go to build. I feel like Muzzy needs to get lackeys and so hope they're the good ones, to be completely this. honest. To help with this hyena. Mars agrees. Yeah. Ugh, not what he's after. Yeah, faceless. Th those with summon a two drop and evolve, he's ended up with, and yeah. that's not what he's looking for. Probably the two worst. I mean, it's very situational, but in this spot... Yeah, for, for this one, for this. You know, he's looking for, like, spell discovery, maybe. Find himself a soul fire even, to try and take care of even it. Even deal two, the plus one rush, just right. helps doing extra damage to the board. Because what I was worried about is you go lackeys, you get one Muzzy got, and then he has to go wide. Right. And there's, even though, yes, there's only one Unleash left, there are still Spring Paws, there's still Tundra Rhino. So there are charge minions that can impact a wide board, potentially. Um, and, and then just buff this Hainu even more. Although this Void Walker might be doing the best job in the world right now for Muzzy. Well, I can still connect for the 14 this turn if he wants to. It's right? just the amount of attacks it's, it ends up soaking because of the yeah. way the minions are shaped. Yeah. I don't mind it though. Actually, maybe it's just hitting for 12 and playing two scale hides instead. A little bit safer. Might be better. Just consolidates board a little more as well. You have to consider, again, this match is really tricky because then you have to consider Sea Giants. Yeah. He's going to trade. He's going to double up on Hyena and just use these Spring Paws to trade Say instead. Go. Yeah. Actually, now that I see it, I take everything back. Now, this is probably the most robust play across the board. I'll, I'll rewind time just a little bit. One Soul Fire. Not two. Yeah. Only one. <laughs> so if you make two big Hyenas, well, he's only killing one of them. Nice play as well. He uses his beast with him. Okay, so what two drops would be sick here to evolve into? It's a great question. <laughs> I, I don't have the answer. No. It would just have to be like a, a three attack Hogs, thing. Hogsteed? Rushman? Uh, oh, that's, that's true, yeah. I guess on the same merit scale hide. Uh-huh. Bear in mind, summoned minions do not get the buff off magic carpet. Right. So easy comparison. Uh, Unleash the Hounds would not buff through Magic Carpet, and same with the Evolve Tokens, too. Yep. I wonder. So he's going to take, if he just trades and makes a board, he will take minimum 18 next turn. He's, he's on 25. Like He can take 18 next turn. He's also likely to use all his resources this turn and not life tap. So even if uh, Yu Ying ignores the magic carpet with his remaining you know, 16 attack hyena, it's not like Muzzy can get his hands on enough one drops in one turn to be able to then take care of it, right? right. That's 3-3. Three, three. Not bad. Two mana 3-3. Three, three. Hard pass on that 2-1. I would not send that one in. Okay. Muzzy's holding on to it. There's an extra two damage as well. Eighteen twenty. He has twenty-two. I don't see any more than that. Wait. Uh, you can just smash two scale hides into the three-three. Yeah. It push two each, and then two from either hatch or hero power. I think you do power. that. Right. Do you? Oh, you got um, how much damage are you expecting? Well, you're not going to die next turn, right? You no. put your opponent to four. One void walk is already dead. But if you don't. Take yeah, I swear. I was gonna say, I think you just actually take good trades with the scale hides because if you just leave all the power on board, you're asking for this hyena to get cleared. And if this hyena gets cleared, you can still kind of lose the game from that position, right? Well, you can put them to what three or four? Mm. If you jam them in, three, yeah. And then you have so hatchet, hatchet, hatchet hero, hero power. power. And the, like I said, one, one void walk is gone, maybe. And I believe I'm just gonna quickly check for us sound really silly. There's no other taunts in the deck. So there's a one Void Walker to stop you getting lethal, and they cannot kill you. Mm -hmm. It's worth, worth considering. Yeah. 
there's the package, as <laughs> Sol call them. Mm. Oh, don't think it's going to be enough. Uh, Muzz just scanning all his options to try and find a way out and he decides that life tapping is not going to find him anything better than this and you do see why these two cards are considered so naturally synergistic. Three mana play puts three bodies on board, yeah. meaning that it's technically free alongside that Sea Giant, but Yuying just needs any source of damage and he has it with the Tundra Rhino. So he's going to square it up. Hunter gets over the line very, very quickly indeed. I've got to get, it, get this in there. It's against a deck that I have more huge question marks over <laughs> in Zoo. Yeah, and, and bear in mind, I think the, the the huge importance to this deck is drawing Unleash the Hounds is so important. Obviously, in this matchup where Zoo wants to go wide. Is it time? It's time. Here we go. Going for the Wondrous Wand, which, as I said, uh, just in case you don't know the treasures you can choose from, the wand is probably the most, on average, best pick. And it is three mana, draw three cards from your deck and make them cost zero forever. There is no, there, there is no time limit on them. Even in the next game, <laughs> yeah, they the next still game. cost zero. Yeah, some people like to lose this game just so they can have zero cards you, in the next You can one. take a break from Hearthstone, come back two years later, and they still cost zero. But they'll be in wild, so it doesn't matter. Wow, shade thrown at wild. Wild fans, at Ravencast on Twitter. <laughs> yes, interactions. <laughs> So yeah, there, there's the Grim Rally just making the board as big as possible. And uh, this juggler actually might do amazing if you can hit that 2-4. It is upsetting that that happens in the bad order yes. for you though, isn't it? Ooh. Well, that's also upsetting for Muzzy. Just want just one juggler, just get rid of this 2-4. Does he? Oh no, that wouldn't really help, would it? Never mind. Well, yep. so I like we three cards that cost zero. Poof. Well, that Wait, cost that cost zero? It. Oh, no! Uh-huh. Oh, okay. <laughs> One out of three. <laughs> uh-huh. And then this draws another card that costs zero. <laughs> okay, didn't get that. Oh, so now... How safe do you think Yuying feels now? Because he could just go green skin taunt and go face. Yeah, see, I actually want to rewind and, like, talk about the Legendaries pick off the uh, Togwaggle there as well, because I think that was an option where you just dump some Legendaries on the board, go face, and you have lethal set up. Definitely an option. I've been stung too many times personally, though, by that card. Uh -huh. They are never Ragnaros. They are always Low Walker Cho. But, I mean, just, you know, a couple of 5-5s five or 6-6s six or something. They didn't have to be spectacular in that spot. Yeah, I don't even to... get those. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> Trust me, I get, like, Thalnos, Low Walker Cho, and a Millhouse Mana Storm. Hey, a couple of 4-4s. <laughs> Sign me up. Three okay. mana, two 4-4s. Four I think drawing a million cards is great, too. Sure. <laughs> oh, my goodness. The pick into a 1-1. One -one. Sorry for popping down the mic, then. I apologize, but that was pretty nutty. Yeah. So Ewing actually went the complete opposite of what I would have suggested of just going face, going wide, and just saying, let's go. Just decided to hyper trade yeah. instead. Kind of reasonable. I guess the idea, especially with the sap in hand, is like, well, what, what, what can Muzzy even yes, do exactly. now? <laughs> what, what problem can Muzzy pose that I cannot solve? Tap. And then... So uh huh. <laughs> package. Tell me more. What? What about his package? No, Microtech controller. So I don't put words into my mouth. Myra's is just uh, more fuel for the fire that I believe Yung does not need. To be completely honest, the sap on the sea giant. It's probably gonna just put a giddy up green skin. Let's go. Yeah. Put an end to this game, to be honest. You don't even need to, right? Yeah. You can just green skin next to it, so I plus one damage. Yep. I don't mind it. Oh, nine mana. <laughs> the way to turn to get that plus ten attack. You looked up the definition of greed in a dictionary. You would just have a transcription of that sentence <laughs> from Raven right there. You had so many other card choices. Ewing looking very comfortable. Yeah, especially because we can see the green skin. 
Muzzy might be thinking, okay, well, what if he attacks? It bounces the hench clan. Does that get me enough time to hit him once or twice? But then we can see, well, actually, it doesn't bounce because Ewing, if he so desires, can make this pick plus one durability and also hit for seven. He's just missing one damage. So can he raiding party into a deck hand? I'm wondering if he Myra's first. Yeah, so Myra's first because he can then pick up, like, sap, exactly, sap, which gives you the perfect answer to the giant. <laughs> Um, gives you, leaves you completely safe. And since I'm he picked up the car. prep as well, and another zero mana Dread Corsair, he can just do everything. Prep, sap, Dread Corsair, and green skin this turn. Mm. And I think Muzzy's only response in that position is to reach forlornly for the bottom right of his screen Love and hit that concede and button. Yeah, uh, slight mistake on my part. I didn't even think about sap because I made an auto assumption yeah, that everyone runs one, and he actually runs, uh, runs two. He sure does. It actually just has lethal here, right? With the second deadly poison? Yep. Oh, yep. I didn't even look. <laughs> All I mean, he's doing is he, saving he, Muzzy the, the time of reaching for the bottom right yeah. of his screen and hitting concede. He had long-term lethal anyway, but this just sped it up a little bit. And Yuying actually just going up to a 2-1 lead against Muzzy now on the road, taking down the zoo. That's a, that's a lot of long-term planning. It is. But again, bad matchup. You know, we're talking about the risk you take of just playing the Doomsayer and saying my, my opponent doesn't have, doesn't have good options. So, a few options here, but Coin Blast Wave is live now, and then Ewing can just take the hit and play Giggling, Giggling Inventor. Inventor. He could get Flame Strike, but I don't think that does enough because the follow up this turn isn't good enough unless he plays Zilliax and hopes. Uh huh. How many minions would he overkill? Is it just the one this time? One, I believe, yeah. Yeah. But he, but he doesn't need stuff, right? He's got stuff, he just needs the time to play it. Sure, but you know, if there were a lot, uh, you know, if all of these minions had one health, for example, and you have all these oh, chances that would have of been like, a a, like a miracle yes. spell yes, 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 to yes. get you out of trouble. But here, I mean, he already has the dragon for the crowd roaster as well. Unity, precision, precision. Look at this turn. If this was the case, was Flame Strike not better? Oh, is he, is he going long term and thinking Blast Wave Scorcher? Whoa, <laughs> that's but ambitious. I just don't know when he's playing his Blast Wave now. Well, so to answer your original question, would Flame Strike be better? No, it would not really be any different because even if the giant is used to trade into the Zilliax, which is nonsense, of course that's not going to happen, but even if it did, then the giant would still be an 8-5 and Flame Strike still wouldn't clear it anyway. Um, so I don't think Flame Strike would have been any better than Blast Wave is here. I was just wondering if there was more buffs coming down so Blast Wave doesn't actually clear the board sure. if you're not going to play it that turn. Again, there's only one Grim Rally remaining. Sure. Sometimes you just got to assume your opponent doesn't have all the good things. And zero healing as well coming out of this second part of Zilliax because the Lackey just able to clear this off. There's the magic carpet getting the job done. And this is the problem. Once the carpet sticks and starts to get work done, you cannot stick any other minions. And this is this is the weird part though, because now Giggling Inventor sucks. That that's is, why I thought that's like, the better argument yeah. to me for sure. I got there. The, the curve. <laughs> The curve of Blast Wave into Giggling Inventor did seem to give you an opportunity where maybe there aren't enough attacks on board to be able to plow through because whether it costs seven or whether it costs five, it's still four attacks that you have to allocate into the Divine Shields before you can get anything. But with a magic carpet on the board, that's all going to end up being pretty futile anyway. <laughs> Whoa! One, one okay. spell off the paddling wave and he picks up... Oh my... What is it with Mage and World Championship, Sol? And now Power of Creation, like for Stegatrons, can potentially dig him out of this? Or even just Crowd Roaster. And then maybe that's enough based on what he plays. Because Rush doesn't do anything to, to Ewing's face this turn. Muzzy just has to go wide. <laughs> yeah. I think Muzzy, when, when your opponent's playing a weird card in their deck, as Power of Creation has kind of become weird. It's, it's, it's Unfortunately. Cut. Yeah, it's cut from a lot of these lists. You do then kind of tend to naturally focus on a little bit when you're when you're planning your turns. So I think he definitely will be considering the implications of Power of Creation here. Yeah, no matter how many times you give Rush to something, no, it will not gain charge. No. Double Let's get the extra attack then. Hey, 
They're so fire. Okay, well. There are Sunwalkers. There are four Seven Taunts. And there are 30 total six drops in the game, I believe. Just taunt reliably. So two taunts at one time. What to do? What so the... So, yeah, both of those taunts would make you survive unless I'm missing something on board. Yes. Because the, there are magic carpets, though. No, two, yeah, yeah, yeah. two of them, in fact. But only potentially three cards without Solarium. Yeah. All right. Rips it. Some walkers. Some walkers. Okay, snap pick. And now we have to see how much it deciphers this. The soul fire is the key one as well. Yeah. No, no, no one drops. Magic carpets suck. <laughs> Was he uh, drawing the high end of a curve of his deck here? <laughs> Still just gets there, right? Almost <laughs> certainly now. I just, I just love the zero one drops drawn with two magic carpets on yeah. the board. Okay, so three one goes into three one proxy shield, one six proxy shield. Well, if that's the case, the two four may as well proxy shield. Because nothing, you're not playing yes. anything that benefits from the magic carpet anyway. Okay, so then you can go... Okay. Oh, yeah, there you go. Okay, yeah, yep. that's the easy way That'll to do it. Yep. Yeah, instead of having to worry about breakpoints, just kill everything, get the three knives to go yeah. base, wow. fire off the soul fire. Yeah. Makes sense. And Sol, we're never going to hear the end of it, but Sol likes soul fire. The players who like soul fire have also won games of zoo. All I'm saying Maybe you've got a point, Sol, okay? Didn't want it to get earth shocks. Well, sometimes this happens when you do that. Mm -hmm. Might earth shock the one, two to push three to face. You never know. <laughs> but yeah, it is available with the coin. If Muzzy even wants to. Are you scared of that? Well, th there's the read of no conjurous calling. And also four drops aren't that scary. But I also don't really know what Muzzy's using coin for the rest of this game. Right. So I think doing this is just fine. Agreed. And now, things might start come crashing down. Alex Straza, your face. While you have heal for eight just on the board. And it only does one damage to begin with. This is the power level of this card. It's kind of absurd, isn't it? It just resets games. Walking Fountain? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It Absolutely. just resets games. Absolutely. The problem is now, they're playing the matchup effectively from turn 10. And Muzzy's deck, you know, both decks do it well. But because there's no burst from Yu Ying, he has to just start all over again. Yeah. And with Hagatha, things start getting real weird. <laughs> real weird? Well, be because Hexes come back. You know, Earthshots come back. You know, uh -huh. even Bloodlust potentially. Uh-huh. You're a pessimist, aren't you? Disguised as an optimist. Yeah. I just lose a lot, so I just know. <laughs> I, 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 just, I just know what happens. That's, that's true. All. Yeah. No, you're a realist. You just yeah, live you in go. your sad reality. <laughs> Jeez. There's a small thing here for Yu Ying uh -huh. because he has now seen two. If these die. They're gone. So there's no absurd healing. Yep. So, no, I'm so just, this is bad, but I'm just saying he then knows that if these die, if he can find a way to clear these off, Caligo's Flame Strike, for example, would do it, would do a pretty nice job right now. Then the game, like, is, is flat again. It just, that that's the game from 30. You're not going to re heal afterwards. Yeah. It's Caligo's. Nova calling uh. or explosion. Uh. Do you just Nova? And, if, and try and get Caligos to live? Yeah, so if you Nova, then potentially your 10-drop sticks. Kadgar, and you could Conjure. make the world's biggest 10-drop board on the following turn. I mean, it's as good a plan as I can think of, so. <laughs> Seem like the worst thing And in you've the world. seen one scheme? Yeah. You've seen... Have you seen a hex? Oh, no, he mulled hex, right? Yeah, so he, he, I think he has one hex left. And it's completely non-susceptible to Hagatha the Witch hero card as well. Because you assume they've all got more than three health for 10 drops. Your 10 drops? Yeah, yeah you'd hope so. You're having a bad time. I mean, Kaggar's going to bite the dust, but everyone else is fine. Yeah. But, yeah, I, 
Not that you should snap pick anything in a World Championship match. Absolutely. But you already have one Conjurers, which is effectively two Conjurers. You do not need four right now. You need to right. not lose. No possible answer, I believe. Okay, well, I was going to ask you some questions for some analysis, but I kind of just want to wait to see what happens. Yeah. Interesting. Muzzy just smash and totem here. Seems to suggest he's not going to Hagatha this turn, which, you know, <laughs> is pretty much a given because all it does is clear his own board. It's also the sickest totem, so he can Hagatha next turn. <laughs> sure. <laughs> which is insane. That's fair. <laughs> okay, so Muzzy's saying, you know what? I'm going to go wide. The healing totem is actually pretty sick. And here we go. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now he can even potentially keep his Kalagos if he wants to and do it on the Giggling Inventor instead. But no, the Divine Shield Taunt, the, the little mechs are going to get in the way yeah. of his board space. Yeah. I like Ten so I think Tens it is. He can also taunt up choice minions as well with his Sunfury. All right, two Hakkars. That's going to make this game nice and clowny. Just what we like to yeah. see. Two Boomship Dudes. Destruction. Shields up! Ooh. Not gonna go again. I want the double her card to be taunted. <laughs> uh, one, just a side note as well, the way Khadgar works, in case you are not familiar, is when he du when he like resummons again, it duplicates the summon. Yes. So you will always see mirrored. So we saw two two big boys, the seven nines, and we, then we saw two um, two Hakars because uh, Kagar doesn't summon new ones, he summons duplicate copies. Correct. So the vanilla outcome from that Conjurer's Calling, he would have got one seven nine and one Hakar. And so Kagar just duplicated a single copy of each of those. What do you make of Archmage Vargoth uh, in, in this list, Sol? Yeah, I wonder, because obviously, like, Electra's in there, and that's a powerful card, so it did Im immediately kind of get me thinking when I was looking at Control Shaman about whether Vargoth went in there, but when I tried it, it just wasn't really cutting the mustard. It was uh, powerful with Rain and Toads, for example, with, like, you just kind of scrambled and scrapped and did everything that you could to kind of just about survive, and then that was, like, your game winner. Farsight. Just, just logging out, yeah, and then Farsight will get the job done as well. Obviously, Lightning Storm, reasonable. Can we just... Just give one final shout-out to that healing totem. Yeah. Because without it, I think Muzzy just dies. Very possible. Because he can't play Hagatha, so then his late game plan gets way, way, way worse. Yeah. So if Hagatha's delayed, it gets way, way well, worse. Well, I mean, he, he, just, he just thumps his minions into the minions first and then plays Hagatha afterwards. It doesn't make a huge difference. <laughs> I guess. Can we sh give a shout-out to this five armor? <laughs> Yeah, okay, there you go. That's give a shout out to Agatha, never mind. Yeah. Ignore everything I do. Can we give a shout out to this to Witch's Brew? Brew? <laughs> Can we give a shout out to this Vargoth being dead so Muzzy doesn't <laughs> double up on these echoes? I don't know what that even means. It's not any help, does it? No. <laughs> Can you make that noise again, please? No. Nice. Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't as good the second it time. It was pretty close. Okay. <laughs> Next game ends. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if that's the way this match ends, I'm not gonna lie, I'll laugh a little bit. I kind of want to ping my Hakar this turn. Oh, never mind. There oh, we that. go. Yeah, Doesn't matter about the bloods if you can just kill them anyway. It turns out. If you Conjurer's Calling, 8-7, drop and get, get in, that does the damage you need to do. And not the most impactful in other ways that we've seen, but guess what? Those Giving Inventors got some work done. Next match is the fifth match of today, and the match will be Bunny Hopper versus SN Jing. Take a look at the lineups for Jing and Bunny Hopper. Mid range hunter banned away from Bunny Hopper. I feel like the story so far today has been mid range hunter struggling, but Jing banning it away, and he has his own tempo rogue 
band away. So a uh, pretty expected band from, from Bunny Hopper's side, but Jink coming at us with something weird. I Shuffling everything. <laughs> I wish they could see that. Because you have to go with this Leroy anyway to now trade. So you've lost all lethal potential. You have no kill on a magic carpet. You have less cards than your opponent. And Jing now has initiative. You have an almost 0% chance to win from this spot. Ah, he's on the Arch Villain Reform plan. Just two more turns and then more turns after that. <laughs> I think this was a mistake from Bunny Hopper. Quite a, quite a rare one at that. I mean, I think about this year for Bunny Hopper. It, he had two championship appearances, made it to the finals of both of them, won one of them. His overall HCT record, 49 and 32. And if you exclude the LAN events and qualifiers that he played in, his playoffs and championship win rate was over 80%. He was 30 and seven in playoffs and championships. That's, that's kind of really where it counts. He's only lost seven matches in all of HCT throughout, throughout uh, 2018. Yeah, and you can move that up to 30. One in seven because he won his first match of the world championship. And, and he's not a player that's had, you know, any shortage of camera time. And, and in all my time watching Bunny Hopper, I don't think that I've really seen him make things that I would consider philosophically incorrect plays, like fundamental. And this is the first one. Ah, time to get more juice for the Rafam. Mmm. Rafam juice. <laughs> the worst kind of juice. <laughs> it's really bad. <laughs> yeah. It tastes like grapefruit. It tastes like grapefruit, and oftentimes whoever gives you the juice kills you before you're ever, ever able to drink it. Yeah. By the way, it costs like $8 a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> if you're paying $8 for grapefruit, you are getting scammed in so many possible ways. But it's organic. <laughs> Touche. Uh, grapefruit juggler, we just talked about this. <laughs> wow, okay. I mean, it's just insult to injury at that point that the jugglers are like, hey, here's one to face. Scarabag looks over, it's like, what are you doing? I don't think Scarabag has the ability to look. That's what you think. <laughs> just wait till Abusive uh, Sergeant shows up. <laughs> Yeah, that's a little bit weird just to me. The arms just crack out of the egg and it starts swiping. <laughs> Abusive Sergeant comes in, get to work. <laughs> He's like, but I'm an egg. <laughs> from nothing. That was the sound of arms breaking from the egg and then swiping at someone. I'm just picking Beta Dune and jamming it. <laughs> Why not? Uh, the only disaster scenario I could think about wasn't even in the format. It was the apothecary that like deals you five when you summon a minion. Oh, yeah. The Apothecary Imp or something like that? Yeah, something like that. I don't remember what it's called. Three minute five, five deals you five damage whenever you summon a minion. Or Wrath Guard against Warrior. Remember those days? Ooh. Don't get shield slammed. Everyone has a team. Possibly the most one sided zoo game I've seen in a long time. What's the name of that card? Void Analyst? Is that what it is? Yeah. Death Rattle, all demons in your hand game, plus one, plus one. Ah, it's got value. It's a Void Walker. I don't think that's the relevant part. All right, let's take a look. This, this is why it's in the deck, to see what legendaries you get right before you concede. It's a cool animation. Lord Godfrey gets picked up. Doesn't matter. He is dead, correct? I didn't actually he, do the math on this. Oh, he's extremely dead. He's, There's a magic carpet in play. He's Apologies. In, he's incredibly dead. <laughs> he's more dead than you could ever even imagine. He's deader than dead. Super dead. Oh, to be hoisted by your own guard. Your own lackeys working against you. Jing up one game. Pretty critical mirror match, all things considered. However, I think looking at the deck lists, not unexpected. I useless spell. So it's kind of a toss up, but I think if I'm in Bunny Hopper's spot, I'm going for Cadgar Astromancer here. So Cadgar Astromancer gives him uh, a copy of a six drop. Sixes are good right now. It, it, yeah. I was thinking, though, it might be valuable to hold on to the Cadgar for a Connor. We must stand together, united That's greedy. It is greedy. It's very greedy. 
Oh, oh boy. <laughs> oh, jeez. That's the biggest one. And now Jing is in major trouble. Bunny Hopper must have stuck his almonds in the freezer because that is the stone cold nuts. Petrified almonds. Omega Devastator offered, though. That almost wipes out a damaged Stegatron, which is not very damaged at the moment. Yeah. Okay, then. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's an appropriate remark from the Mad Genius. Also, the funny thing about this is these damaged Stegatrons are mechs. There's a, a Zilliax in hand. Oh, yeah, for Bunny Hopper. He just gets extra damage. He just gets extra damage. Also protects him against Dynamatic if you were to have that. But Jing has to have something drastic happen this turn. I, I don't know what it is. The Vicious Scale. Uh, vicious, um, I don't know what its name is. Two mana, two, two. The Whoa! Devastator the Khadgar! you got to kill those damage Stegatrons. Those are five twelves. The Khadgar's already done the, the dirty work. you got to kill the five attack thing. I'm very worried. Couple things here. One, Jing just basically told Bunny Hopper in multiple ways, I don't have a brawl. The first fact was he didn't brawl. <laughs> the second fact was he killed Khadgar because he was so scared of the Conjurer's Calling because he doesn't have brawl. Warrior is a deck. Two, he left a 512 on board that he could have killed. <laughs> Warrior is a deck that you have to to play conservatively with brawls in these styles of matchups. So even if Jin kills one of the 512s here, it doesn't necessarily tell Bunny Hopper that he doesn't have a brawl. What it tells him is that he feels like he's safe enough to play through a to play through the scenario and wait to brawl. Bunny Hopper here pretty much got the signal that there was no brawl because instead Jin killed Cadgar. If that's a bluff, that would be enormous. And now Jing needs Brawl. Hmm. Warpath doesn't appear that it helps at first glance. This looks not. like it has to be some kind of Zilliax turn to try and get that burst of healing. But beyond that, there's not a great way yeah, the, the to clear off this board. The Vicious being expended last turn, the Vicious Scrap Hound, the 2-2 that gains armor, th that's a card that I like combining with Zilliax because it effectively doubles the lifesteal. It's huge. It's massive. And Unity. that was also expended. Precision. She has no way to get through these damaged Stegatrons efficiently. The Khadgar scared him. He's a pretty powerful mage. I'm pretty scared of him too, but... Does he get anything off here? They're not great. Yeah, he got a lot of these. I saw a lot of this guy get queued up. I think that's enough that you get to queue up, but Bunny Hopper has Voodoo Doll in hand, so it's just not going to end up uh, well for Jing in that spot. So Bunny Hopper just counting it, making sure. But that's easily 14 damage that he's got. Yep. Bunny Hopper going to tie the series. And I don't think Jing necessarily gets out of that spot if he kills a 512 instead of killing a Cadgar. But killing the Cadgar opened the floodgate. Bunny Hopper, no fear, and you took a lot more damage as a result. Maybe you get another turn if you kill one of the damaged Stegatrons. Yeah. When you get him in bulk, you have to yeah. you know, give a deal for that sort of thing. It, it does feel like when I get to the super late game that uh, my success rate on the uh, Leroy shuffle is quite low because the, the Warrior has amassed a decent amount of armor at that point. 
So I, I usually tend to go for the uh, the super value with the shuffle on the high spirit tog waggle. I also find it to be a bit of an issue when my opponent uh, plays a 7-9, and I don't really have a way in hand to deal with it. Oh, I love that. This would be a good time for a miss. That also limits my time. He could find a way. The Tog Michael scheme was drawn. It's only at two right now, I believe. Yeah. Two. It should be three now, because he drew it uh, the turn previous to this one. Is that correct? Because he oh. played the Tog Waggle this turn. Well, Vendetta, a pretty reasonable activator for that uh, evil miscreant. This is probably a Vendetta, evil miscreant. Play a lackey, play a talk while get another wondrous wand. Survive. Survive. And kill. Oh. Oh. Whoa. Whoa there, buddy. Yeah. That, that could have been. That could have been bad. The calm before the storm. Now, with playing this Togwaggle, he kind of has to go for Wonders Wand. I was kind of thinking of, does he have the time ever to do like a weird goblet sort of play? But Wonders Wand is just so good. Well, his game plan is very straightforward at this point. Oh! oh, oh, oh. Yeah, his game plan at this point is to go for the Leroy Togwaggle scheme, Wonders Wand. Yeah, and, and this wait, is... Wait, wait, but... but. Okay, what? No, I see, I see, I see. Yeah, 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 but what? This because is... he doesn't have the second prep, he can't go for that in a turn. This would be a Why not? Because to... though two wondrous wands cost six. Oh, you mean like it just full on one turn. I think Bunny Hopper's counting on being able to deal some damage here. Still got two eviscerates left in the deck. Yeah, he does have to get through his deck first in order to guarantee that the Leroy's are drawn. That's yeah, a true story. But he's not under too much pressure at this point. He knows that Jing's hand is pretty weak just by how he's been playing, right? It's well, I think Jing's going to be able to swing this board pretty darn quickly. I mean, he's got Shield Slam for the 6-6. Six, six. That's going to boost the minions back down. And then you have Dynomatic after that. Like, you're going to be able to pretty much make some good work of this board. Yeah. There's no Shadow Steps left in the deck. So you don't have to worry about the Miscreant activating again. There's no preps. It's pretty straightforward. Just go face turn here for... For Jing. And Bunny Hopper now is under real pressure. I don't know if he's going to be able to get this done. He's losing very bad right now. This is exactly what I talked about earlier on. I feel like Bu Bunny Hopper. The second auctioneer was the one that's really the question mark to me. Did he draw far enough? And then, of course, you know, my head's always going to float on that shadow step on the Zilliax. I think with that Zilliax, Bunny Hopper probably had this game in the bag. So many options. That Togwaggle scheme, I believe, is at four. So even if Bunny Hopper was to Leroy Togwag, oh wow, wow, that is desperate. Sap is very nice. Yeah, Bunny Hopper's moving in now, and this is this is very wise from I think Bunny Hopper's side, where he recognizes I'm going to need more time if I'm going to get this done. So I got to spend some mana, I got to deal some damage. And I got to draw a lot of cards. And it's got to have to succeed as well. Because you can just still rip Leroy multiple times in a row to get it done. You don't have to do it in one turn. You can do it in successive turns. Yeah, but I believe he still has one bomb left in his deck. He has an, uh, I believe he has an evil cable rat. And a bomb. Are those the last two cards? I think he's played the cable rat. Oh, he played the cable rat. I think he did. Hmm. He's got another sap left, right? Yeah, it would have to be sap. 
Sap and bomb? Sounds right to me. He's going to have to chain together multiple Leroy's, but to me, one of the bigger ones is that he's going to have to also deal with a Boom Reaver again. Like, Boom Reaver's just going to come down to the situation again. Well, the thing that I'm thinking about is uh, with uh, three damage uh, thrown to the face here. Well, let's count. Hmm. So his max damage output next turn. 25. Unity, precision, perfection. Whoa. Why not just play the Boom Reaver in that case? I'm almost out of cards. I'm out of cards. Oh, oh it's, it's two, two bombs. bombs. So that's just a mislethal because he had the hero pop. Oh, no, it is lethal. What? Okay, I, I didn't know it was two bombs left. I'd be worried about Grim Rally a little bit. Grim Rally would be the punish to that, and I think this, one, this play is quite obviously better against that. Spell Lackey offered, so Grim Rally is possible. From nothing. Oh. Hellfire. Sends demons. Pretty nice looking swipe. That Jinx is going to have on this turn. Pretty ugly looking draw that Jinx is going to have on this turn. <laughs> Turn jammed? seven is what's going to be really critical here for Jink, because after this swipe, his hand is atrocious for turn seven. I'm just curious if Bunny Hopper's going to jam the Archvillain I, I, next turn. I mean, I think you do. Well, like, he picked the Hellfire, so he does have... His hand is so bad right now. Yeah. But Jink's at 30. You have, like, 15 more one-cost cards in the deck. Like, I don't, I don't think knife jugglers and... Crystallizer and Argent Squires are going to get there anymore. You've been, you've been stifled. But if your opponent plays the Forest Aid in order to generate two twos, the Hellfire only stops that for one turn. Yeah. I think you're slamming that Arc Thief or Fom right here, and that's the way you're going to win this game. Is this the one in 10 games that it wins? All right, Soddle. I hope you're watching. Yes, yeah, Soddle. All right, he's not Aww, gonna... <laughs> come on! If you're not going to play it there, don't put it in your deck. All right, well, it turns out he drew the nuts from Solarium, so... Whatever. You do get another turn to play it, at least. Yeah. You could play it next turn. From nothing. Power. Oh, man. Sometimes from nothing, nothing as well. And four cost card summons four one one imps. I'm thinking like knife juggler. Oh gosh, the turn. From, <laughs> this is a scary bad turn from Jig. Yeah. Like you're gonna look at this board and go, oh my gosh, I am. So, so now think about that coin that was in question, right? If Jing had tried to fight honestly on board, he would have been behind. I think he would have caught back up at the swipe, and he would have coined. Forest State on this turn. It would have been a different landscape, but given how Buddy Hopper's hand panned out, there, Jing was not going to be under threat, really. Yeah, honestly, uh, you can't foresee that, though. The way this game has panned out with Jing pretty much having a dead turn this turn, I don't think Buddy Hopper's going to play the Archfilm Reform because he wants that 10 burst damage from hand. What? With Hellfire, you go to turn 10, that's 13 burst damage from hand. He's going to probably try and put on as much damage as he possibly can this turn. And then on the Forest State turn, which is Pretty obvious at this point. If Forest State isn't obvious right now, I, I just have no idea what would be at this point. Yeah. So he's pushing eight now. Pushes him down to 21. He's got 10 burst damage in hand. If Forest State is going to be played next turn, he can expect three damage to be eliminated, which means he's going to be pushing for six the following turn. He's I mean, a little bit off, but that doesn't even include the minions that he's going to play this turn that can get the recurring damage. I know that it's better to probably not play the Arch Villain or Fom, but that's what everybody wants to see right now. Grim Rally gets drawn for Bunny Whoa. Hopper. And he's got the perfect target for the Grim Rally with the uh, abusive sergeant. 
Oh boy, which is basically only in the deck for its battle cry. And now Jinx just doesn't have time to play the forest save because he's gonna die. Grim Rally is the draw that Bunny Hopper has been looking for for quite some time. And the turn seven for Jane is what gave Bunny Hopper this real opportunity. Without this, he would have had to pay so much respect to board. What? Ah, Fiend of Circle oh, and then okay, Grim Rally. Okay, okay. He does push less damage this way. Does he still set up for lethal? That's, That's the, the person hand. So I think so because of that. Oh yeah, he's got plenty. Plenty okay, so of damage. He's threatening 14 next turn just on board. Yeah. Yeah, Jing. And even if Bunny Hopper didn't even have burst hammer from Hand of Forest, it looks terrible here. And, and you can see why I said if the board is even. If. <laughs> it's a very large if, and you yeah. had some dreadful looking turns. Uh, with a bunch of buffs in hand. Only option for Jake is the Forest Aid. Bunny Hopper's going to force game number five here with probably one of the slowest zoo starts that I've seen in a long time. Just a weird game overall. Weird set so far. Everything's been weird. That means Warrior's going to have to get the job done. Sorry, not Warrior. Rogue. I don't know why I said Warrior. Bro. Yeah, I think um, maybe just hedge claim burglar and get in the dagger. Next turn, you can follow up with backstab, something he develops, evil miscreant, clean up the board with your spells. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. But Bunny Hopper is just, I think, doing the possibilities. Like, could my opponent have just wrath instead of swiping? at any point. Could they have done anything else? Uh, is buying this time on the turn and going into Burglar and Miscreant Ooh. enough? Oh. And War Druid Lodi Forgot found. about the War Druid Lodi. That deals with it pretty darn well. He also gets to put some development behind it. I'm actually curious if you want to put development behind it. I guess because your your draws could be so good. If you draw a Forest Sage, you're going to really having regret not played this. Yeah. And the fact that Jing plays the Squirrel, I think, masks a lot of that hand. The fact that he's willing to just give up the 1-1 one -one in the face of a dagger up. Bunny Hopper's in trouble now, I think. I don't know. He picks up out this board very easily. And then Jing has literally no development. Jing has development draws, though. Bunny Hopper does not. It's a 1 in 10 to draw Forest Aid. What does Bunny Hopper draw that's good right now? A well, Tog Waggle? An Auctioneer? That's it. Yeah, but the thing is, he has Leroy. He has Eviscerate. He, he, if he sticks just one minion, he's just like a shadow step away from winning yeah, the game. Yeah, that's a true story. I mean... And Jing, Whispering Woods is only, is, is not very much development. Forest Aid is basically the only card in his deck that gives him substantial development. And that's a, a one in 10. Oh boy. Oh boy. Not the Miscreant. I want the Miscreant alive. Shadow Step. You said it yourself. Yeah, but Shadow Step. Well, you get to double Twin Spell this. Yeah, well, the problem is, look at Bunny Hopper's hand right now. He's going to start getting in damage and has double sap to just put two one-two lifesteal minions back in your hand. Like Jing running into a turn. Evil Miscreant's good. Mm. <laughs> it's... Oh, yeah? The, the whole thing is summed up by the one card put four minions in play. <laughs> oh, yeah? That card is ridiculously good. Now, sometimes it doesn't put four minions in play. But sometimes it does. Sometimes it just gives you uh, discover a spell. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, who wants to do that in Rogue? And only two minions in play. Ooh, darn. Yeah, I mean, what else? You, 
What can you do? Yeah. Uh, smart by Jing to play both the uh, original Twin Spell version of, of these uh, uh, Blessing of the Ancients in case he draws Whispering Woods. Yeah, the hand information to Bunny Hopper, I'd say, is close to irrelevant at this point. Yeah. Um, but either way, this game is about to get blown out of the water. Bunny Hopper secured a board. He's got a way to eliminate this and develop behind it. That's enough to win games. Yeah. I think uh, Sap, Eviscerate, Edwin. I think just Sap, Sap, Edwin. What else? There's nothing else in the deck to Sap. Sap, Sap, Edwin does set up for lethal. So, yeah. Sap, Sap, Edwin, you push uh, six damage this turn. Belligerent Gnome. That's the, there's a one taunt in the deck. Yeah. So, you put him down to 17. You have 12 damage on board plus that's game. a ton from hand. I'm not seeing a single draw in, in Jing's deck that changes this. Yeah, Token Druid's not going to get it done. I mean, there's 13 from hand for Bunny with Leroy Eviscerate Frostbolt next turn. Yeah, and he's likely to play a 6-6 six, six Edwin this turn. With six damage, <coughs> six damage. Six damage remaining. I just almost died. <laughs> Was it because of the eviscerate usage? You're like, torture! What is he doing? That's what I, that's kind of what I was thinking. A bug just literally flew into my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> he said, shut up, TJ. Draws Whispering Woods. But that is a lot of Damahe still in hand. What shall we hunt? He did. Dead indeed, Bunny Hopper. Three games to two over Jing is gonna move out of the bracket and on to the top eight. Token Druid not able to get it done. Worked well for him in the first series that he played in this group. But Jing gonna have to fight his way through the decider match if he wants to join Bunny Hopper in that top eight. Yeah, not out of the tournament just yet. Has one more match to still move on to the top eight, but it's win or lose at that point for Jing. There are no other directions it can go. And Bunny Hopper once again proves why he is one of the, if not the, best in the world. Next match is the last match of day one, and the match is going to be Healing All Day versus LF Yue Ying. Okay, thank you. Please take a seat. I feel like we've kind of, you know, dodged the, the really long, grindy matches. That last one, by the way, if you keep, weren't keeping track, was over three hours long, and it was aggro matchups. Really? Yes. Wow. <laughs> but uh, this last match, uh, it can have some explosive potential as well, some, some crazy decks on both sides. That's right. So the first thing that draws most people's attention is that the Lone Priest in the tournament belonged to Killing All Day in the form of a miracle, draw your entire deck, play Chef Nomi, and then you seance either with uh, Grave Horrors or on Chef Nomi yourself. Uh, and then you have Yue Ying, who has the Summoner Mage and the Midrange Hunter and the Temple Rogue, which was able to defeat Muzzy in his previous head-to-head -head in what quite possibly was the most exciting series of the day. It's set up here because it also dumps hand for the Omega Assembly. It's true. Um, that being said, I still think Killen's in a fantastic oh, spot. Yeah. There's, there's absolutely, you know, he's absolutely in a, in a powerful position here. And, uh, and yeah, we may see these saps just used, as you mentioned. Well, yeah, I also dumped the hand. Right. He, with with Myra's in hand, he, you, know, you, you want to you empty as much as you can. And yeah, uh, Yi Ying recognizes, OK, well, I'm I'm on a clock here. Uh -oh. Raiding party is a, uh, a no-go. Does nothing uh -huh. once your deck is empty. 
Van Cleef can be powerful. But yeah, it's still a rough situation here. And oof, there's the bombs. Yeah, so I mean, Killam has this opportunity now by shuffling the bombs in, he guarantees it. And I think that's his hold from the previous turns. Sure. His previous turns, like, okay, well, his only way to win this is to Myra. And if I and if he plays the unstable element, I can shuffle bombs and guarantee 15, 20 damage over two turns. Yeah, that's fair. That's absolutely fair. And here, he wants to use the shield slams for sure before his opponent starts burst damaging him. He knows there's a Leroy in the hand. Right. I mean, th this is extremely one-sided. Yang does not have 29 damage next right. turn. There's a Hecklebot with no drawback. There's a Devastator. <sighs> That's even better. Face me, you addled amateur. Face I like me, it. you addled amateur. There's absolutely zero uh, rush here, pun intended, for killing all day to end the game. Right. But he just overdraws, which is really oh, annoying. right. Yeah, this is uh, the one downside of bomb effects. Same, th same thing with Hakar's Mark, or Corrupted Bloods, where if you have a full hand, it doesn't activate. Mm -hmm. All right, well. Miscreant is the hero, hopefully, for Yi Ying here. Finds a kobold and faceless lackey. Let's see, there's a prep sap available. Yeah, he's going for the biggest, thickest, fattest Van Cleef. Blood and plunder. It's Van Cleef. Looks like it's a 12 12, which is fairly important to survive the Omega Devastator's attack. Oh, sorry, 14 14. Even bigger. But with the weapon plus the Mega Devastator itself, it's still enough. Just goes to show you just like the, the raw power of that card. Yeah. <laughs> One card answers a seven card combo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the Omega Devastator here plus the even if the, the microbots can yeah. take out the uh, oh, take out the pirate, take out the Van Cleef, send some bombs in. I mean, right now, Killian is just trying to figure out, is there a way I die, right? Because right. there is there is Leroy Waggle pick. Yeah. So uh, is there a way is... he dies? Is there a way he lethals? <laughs> like, I'm actually just looking. Yeah, is there a way to kill, you? You kill your opponent? You know, you could put, what, three bombs in the decks? So that's right. And plus 15. two fatigue. So Wait, that's 18, actually 15, 20. 16, it's close. 17, 18. All right, if he attacks with the face of the weapon, he goes down to 19, shuffles three bombs. Uh, it's only, it's not enough. Yeah. But this is still very good. Pretty close to lethal when you, you kill all your opponent's stuff. And you're at, uh, you're at 25. Okay, Hecklebot having rush, that's just not fair, man. That's cheap. He heckles something and then just punches him in the face. I know! He starts I'm the fight and gets to finish it. Thinking of any faceless lackey shenanigans can come up huge here for Yang, but I'm blanking out. Yeah, I don't. I don't think there's anything that matters there from the lackey. Yeah. And I think Yang is. He's uh, gonna bounce this uh, miscreant, perhaps with the waggle pick, trying right. to find something. And he's guaranteed dead next turn because Killen has those bombs. Right. So there's nothing really that Yang can do in this position in the following turn. He has to win this turn, and we know that's not possible, unless he's able to gain a bunch of life or stall out his opponent's ability to play those minions. Yeah. I'm trying to think of any possible two off the face of I can't think of anything meaningful. I mean, there's there's ways you can, like, disrupt. Right. But it's, it's, it's not like, very substantial. Okay. All right. Well, now he finds, like, an ethereal lackey into cold blood. Right. Things like that. Oh, got some charge. I mean, he's he's getting good stuff. It, it, yeah, he is, but it's it's still just not close to enough, right? He's sending in four damage to the face. I mean, it's an 11. impressive push, nonetheless. Imagine right. if you play this all out. It's still twelve more damage. He got he got killing within single digit range. Yeah, that's sure. very impressive. But bombs away. Here it comes. Somebody order a bomb. Have I got a and they have rush. Yeah. Yeah, so that, that's going to wrap it up. Killing All Day going to crush Tempo Rogue with the Warrior. And this right here is on full display. Why Warrior is such a fearsome class for Rogue to go up against. One of the very few classes that can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe very confidently with this class. Yeah, Rogue yeah, was uh, the class that's probably the top. While putting on pressure, that it feels like he had to do a commanding sweep of the board instead of just like trading one, two for one every time. Oh, there's a Hyena. So, Vicious Scale Hide, 
yeah. can pick off first by his Mechru, perhaps, or combine with the Spring Paw, takes Nails down. Yeah, gonna take out... No, he's gonna go ahead and take down the entire body of that Blessed Corsair. Yeah, that's that's actually a little bit more of an interesting trade because there is a lot of use for the Mecha Ruse bot for things like Evil Genius. Mm -hmm. So I, I mean, I guess they're, they're still relatively the same thing, but now your opponent gets to hit with the one one and then use an Evil Genius. Yeah, and example. and this is an opportunity for the Sea Giant to come down, but so but uh, Yi Ying does have that uh, Timberwolf plus Unleash. But is your Timberwolf Unleash trading? I think that's a good spot. They invest a lot of their mana well, to do no, 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 not much development. He does have the, sca uh, the scavenging hyena. Oh, the hyena, though. You're but right. he doesn't have the ability, he doesn't have enough uh, in order to guarantee that he doesn't just leave a sea giant on the board. I'm trying to look at like what what Killen's turn looks like here, and then what does Yuying's you know turn look like after it? Because there is the, the Direwolf Alpha into Sea Giant attack here, and then attack phase. This leaves five minions on board for, for Killen. Yuying does have if he unleashes, so unleash plus the Timberwolf. Yeah, plus the scavenging plus the links. Well, is this so? It, there's no, there's no way to get that. This is like lethal damage, right? It's not lethal, yeah, it's but like ten if you kill command. We saw what? A, was it like a twenty-two attack scavenging hyena with raging against yeah. Buzzy? And the beast of wrath here too, coming in for another plus two. Love it. Keeps him, keeps him his board around. Dude, he's playing so fast. He is. Here I am trying to like math out. Okay, what all happens here? And and now everything's already dead. Yeah, the only thing that you need to know is that killing all day needs to deal with that hyena stat. That and he's got is, no way to do it. That's a big fella. Yeah, I'm yeah. looking at things in his deck that can help him in this position. And, you know, without a magic carpet, uh, even if he had a magic carpet, it wouldn't be enough right now. Yeah, we're talking about how Hunter had struggled, but it was Yuying with that big scavenging hyena who was able to get the job done before, and it looks like uh, he may be doing it again here. Kill command in the hand, plus that hyena in play. I think it's lights out next turn. Yeah. I mean, in Killen's mind, if he plays Flynn Mimp, he's conceding the game. But if he doesn't play any minions, he's also in trouble. And that is the nature of the Unleashed to Hounds scavenging hyena setup. And I gotta say that it's been so clutch for Yue Ying. It does make me feel like if you're going to account for decks like Zoo Warlock, the decks that are running one copy of Unleashed Hounds are gonna struggle a little bit more. All right, well. This does leave 15 yep. on the board. Another Unleashed if he wants it. Boom. World record damage for Yu Ying available, but uh, he gets the exact lethal here against Killen. We'll tie up the series one game to one. All right. No, you're right. Hmm. At the same time, you can sap the carpet and then do what? Get a green skin. Okay. Oh, well, yeah. If you sap the carpet, it doesn't feel nearly as effective because they're at that mana where they can just kind of play the carpet and have full benefit anyway. Right. Because their deck is all one mana minion cards, so if they just play the carpet and life tap, they're most likely going to play the and, and, and now, Killing All Day can play Mechuru, Mechuru, Sea Giant, trade the Mechuru's for green skin. Ridiculous. This is and, such and a it, powerful it even bird. still leaves him with a, a, a wide board because they're Mechuru's. So even Sap here isn't that effective at dealing with the Sea Giant. Yeah. And Rang's running out of life. So right. it's like Minus and Stable Elements. He's down to 12. It's going to put such a fast clock on himself. It almost feels like he, he has to Minus and Stable Element now. Otherwise, he's not going to be able to get the benefit of having a couple turns to set up big swings. Yeah, so if he were to sap the giant, play Myra's. He could even sap the giant, play Deadly Poison, play Myra's. Yep, that gives him the ability to play Drake Crusher immediately and then utilize Backstab in preparation if he needs to do anything else. He could draw Backstab and kill the, the, uh, the, par the carpet. carpet there too. I like it. Okay, so that's definitely happening. The question is what else I is I think happening. he played the Myra's. Yeah, I think he's going to Myra's without the Deadly. So he gets one fewer card. There's that Jack Rousset too. Eh? I'm out of cards. One fewer card. I'm curious what he was hoping to draw that he did not want to play the Deadly Poison first. The only cards in his deck is Saucy Deckhands. 
But he's already played and he, one. And he drew one and didn't play it. And he didn't play the Drake Corsair either. He doesn't want his... He wants... Okay, so I think his plan was to not play minions, force the Sea Giant to be max yeah. cost, and then go for, like, a sap and, like, a tempo play afterwards. But he's still not going to get there. Right now he has Leroy, Eviscerate, Saucy Deckhand for 12 damage plus the 4 damage dagger. That's that's not going to get there. That's right. that's not even half of killing. Well, that's a little bit over killing, half of killing all day's life. All right. Well, the small minions, Joey bots, send themselves in. One damage fatigue. Blood and blood. And, yeah. Yep. <laughs> he can take out the sea giant at least. Yeah. This guy's toast. And in doing so, lead. play a big Edwin. Right, but I mean, Kalen also is pretty close to ending this game. Although, I will say this Edwin is very fearsome. Yeah. All right. Well, you go down to four, and he does have, he has what, 16, uh, 22 next turn. He still doesn't have lethal. Right. He, he also dies in fatigue. He, he takes, yeah, he dies to fatigue in two turns. Yeah, so he's, it, it seems so like he's dead no matter what. I, yeah, I don't see a way that this wins the game. Killin kills one of these on board, you attack for 19, and then the game ends. Yeah, right? so Killin probably won't even life tap if he can, if he can math it out. He first, he has to evaluate where are all the cards I saw, I've seen. Yeah, I he think just he, saw an eviscerate. Right, you play you play C giant attack in. That's the best chance of winning because your opponent dies to fatigue in two turns. Right, there's there's zero reason to try and do anything else. And as it is in fact what Killen does, there is fatigue for two, and there is 19 damage available to Yiying, 20 with the dagger. Oh, That's not enough. Killen only leads two to one. Zuolok with a huge victory. Pyromancer. And then play Circle again if you want to draw more cards from the Acolyte. Right, yep. And then you heal your Acolyte for an extra draw, too. Right. It's like you're talking about. That does find a Gadget Sands, though. Seals very hard to not use Power of the Creation in this spot. Yeah, I mean, you get to hit your opponent for or, sorry, eight. Contra's calling. Yeah, you get to hit your opponent for eight, and then... He actually would really like to get the seven eights. If he gets the seven eights, then uh, they don't actually. If you get Grave Horror, they don't right. die to a mass hysteria. But he did not. He got uh, another giant. So now this is an opportunity. Killen can just attack into one of them and play mass hysteria and clear the board. That's right. And then the threat has been abated for now. You know, for a minion heavy deck that plays barely any spells, yeah, you guys are holding an awful lot of he spells. He really does. Cards. He has he has more spells than. <laughs> A lot more spells. He has more spells in his hand than are in his deck. <laughs> Actually, that's not true. He's the same number because he does play the power. Of it feels like that. It does. It's very fairly close. Oh my goodness! Oh no! Actually, he has, he has seven spells in his hand. Are you serious? Jeez. Giant number two with conjure calling number. Two. Number two, okay, with a well, twin spell. This actually works out fairly okay. Well, not for, it works out okay for killing, but like he actually has the version of the deck that can handle it because he has two mass hysteria versus a lot well, he of. He doesn't have one in his hand. And he's at 18, and his opponent has two giants and a fireball. So. Right now, he's looking pretty dead. Yeah, that Lizzo scheme is fairly recent, right? So he can't I go just for a last turn. turn. Oh, boy. I think Killen's dead. I don't think there's I anything think so he can too. drop at this point, given the fireball. I mean, this is what we're talking about, how how much pressure this deck can put on. I know Yu Ying did have I mean, a very, very powerful hand. Yeah, I mean, that, that Mountain Giant draw was just absolutely, yeah. like, the nuts. And hey, second Mass Hysteria, just a little bit too late. Yep. Turvy, let's do a scheme. I mean, okay. Well, scheme for two. Scheme for two oh, here. Regenerate. Actually, okay. And rejuvenate. All right. All right. Regenerate here. The scheme for two. Fourteen. So he's actually, thanks to this, just out of range of these two plus fireball. Right. Uh, oh no! But the, put, exactly put, the, put the ping. Yeah. The ping. <laughs> the ping does it. Fireball ping. No. <laughs> After all of his efforts, <laughs> futile. Uh, yeah. That fireball off of the uh, the fire tree coming up big here. Giving Yu Ying lethal damage and forcing a game number five with his rogue deck, which uh, probably one of the toughest matchups. 
or it's e true. Edward Van Cleef. Kion hesitating, like, do I uh, play the Acidic Swamp who's here? Absolutely not. Recognizing its power against the Waggle Pick and its raiding party with Captain's green skin. Uh -huh. All right, oh, it's well. going to be a party, all right. Uh -huh. Deckhand one and two coming through. Four damage to the face. Does swing with the, uh, the dagger here since there's no Hench Clan thug. Kill him as an Acolyte. Yeah, I mean, you know your opponent has Waggle Picks. You're trading your Acolyte for a card. And, the, you know, living for four extra life. Yeah, it's an interesting spot because obviously, you know, the, the Acolyte in combination with Wild Power Mancer, which we saw last game, uh, can be very, very effective. However, you know, Killen does need to find a way to not just die to this board. So, right. you know, the, the absor absorption of damage from the, uh, the Acolyte, I think, is is yep. appealing at least. It's a force play. He, he wants him to play Waggle Pick, so that way uh, he can use the Ooze. Thing is, the Ooze is going to rebalance back a minion. And there's another Waggle Pick. Wait, another Waggle it. Pick. With there's more damage. Nomi, which is not a card you're looking for as long as you have cards in your deck. Uh, this is not looking that good for Kill on Day. This is one of the kind of decks that's out there at Hearthstone, which is extremely dependent on cards like Auctioneer. Yep. And, you know, Killen doesn't have any signs of being able to live to the Auctioneer. Yeah, Auctioneer decks are extremely effective if you get to go up against slower decks, controlling decks. Much less effective if you are getting uh, getting your, your face beat up and you don't have time to right. find that Auctioneer and go off with it. I wonder if Killen wants to say out to this who's. Seance uh, obviously is fantastic with the Grave Heart, yeah. but we're not at that point where, like, he can even get to that. Yep, that's exactly what it looks like he's doing. Give me use number two. And I think there is just a lot of merit into trying to win back the board in this position. And I, I think Killen recognizes the spot he's in. He needs to expend his resources. But, it, but when he picks up that Auctioneer, it's losing a little bit more power with each expenditure of his resources. The scheme topsy-turvy is so funny. It's just like, you know, zero, zero, kill your guy. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking, like, scheme plus, like, forbidden words or scheme plus, you know. Right. Or, but no, just scheme topsy. Out of yeah. here. You're dead. It's it's a very useful combo. Zero plus zero. So I do remember when uh, you know, when Scheme was revealed, we talked about, you know, oh, well, this could make sense in some sort of Miracle Priest deck. I don't know what that looks like. But, yeah, uh, when we were doing the card reviews yeah. on Obvistone, yeah. Although, you know, usually when we say those things, we're just trying to, like, cover all kinds of possibilities. I mean, I wasn't sure actually how good it would be. And now it's starting to make a, resur a surgence on ladder. It's yep. pretty cool to see. So, you know, now you're in your Yang's camp. Uh, you have a couple of options here. None of them seem super... Whoa, okay. He trades. That, well, okay. I wasn't expecting Temple Greenskin here. I mean, he knows the Waggle Pick is out there, so I was like, okay, maybe he sets up like a, a mini Van Cleef, like a 4-4 mm -hmm. instead. All right. I, I, like, I like this, sort of looking at the... Uh, yeah. You know, his available options here because he, he is up against a deck that he knows has, has silence, right? Mm. Which makes Van Cleef much uh, less reliable. Exactly. You, know, you can easily see your opponent playing, you know, uh, if you ha had, say, two small minions on board, like the, the Van Cleef and the uh, the deckhand. Yep. You know, pyro into silence coin. It's, right. You, no, it, it makes sense. Dead. Here, yeah. you, have, you have a 5 4. You're playing a deck that does not really remove minions very well. Oh. More damage. Well, now, yeah, I, I really like this from Yu Ying. He is just going in on the dagger. Yeah, it is fairly vulnerable to a mass hysteria, but it's his best damage output, and it's kind of like what you're saying. Like, this is the best way he can do with his hand. He still has more damage to back it up with the waggle pick. I mean, kill him down to 13. He, he may need to ooze this, which means your waggle pick gets in the full damage. Oh, there, there is a silence. Big pickup. That's four life. But... He still can't deal with the Captain Greenskin. Yeah, the, the, the Greenskin's still around, and frankly, Killen's not advancing his own game plan whatsoever. You know, he hasn't been able to find any ability to, to really churn through his deck here. Where's your Auctioneer, man? He's got a, a Nomi instead. This game might end up being just laughably one-sided. And it looks to be exactly that case. If Killen, okay, let's say he silences and heals for five, he goes up to 15, 18. 
Five, eight, ten. 14. He just picks up Leroy's making lethal. himself a big bank cleave. Oh, this is clever. Well, holy smokes, it's going to get destroyed by Sap. He's, I mean, he's going in. He's, he's deciding. I mean, and frankly, you know, while there is a Sap in the hand that's going to make this look ridiculous, uh, I think Killen's recognizing that his, his deck's <laughs> basic game plan is not going to work here. He needs to find something else. 16, 16. And Sap. Well, and. Is it just dead? Oh, this might just be lethal with the preparation. It's just dead. And, uh, rather, it's the evisceration. Oh, oh my god. It looked cool, though. He made himself a 16 16. Oh, but yeah. Then... Look, it... this isn't dying, it's dying with style. <laughs> you gotta get a big Bang Cleef out there. It is true that no one's won the world championship without Bang Cleef. Well, he got his own. It wasn't even in his deck. It's out there. Jang, the first Chinese player to go through to the top eight and could potentially put them back in the semifinals for the third year in a row. The year of Kill All Day is going to have to wait until the decider match. But still, you know, Kill is not eliminated. He is one step forward, or two steps forward, one step back. In the meantime, I got to say, Yang sticking to his guns, coming up big. And Tempo Rogue able to deliver where it mattered most. It was on the verge of being swept. Yep. And, you know, we, we saw in Killen's first match that Priest deck looked incredible. It had all the, the, the correct tools when it needed them. Uh, this match, though, you know, it was where Killen really stumbled. He didn't have the time he needed to assemble those tools and just got, uh, you know, uh, really rushed down by uh, that rogue deck, by that mage deck. And, and frankly, if Yu Ying had not picked up that second mountain giant when he did, you know, Killen might have been able to beat even that very powerful draw from the mage. Yeah, that's right. I mean, that draw with the mountain giant being able to play on four is uh, one of the more ideal hands you can have in Summoner Mage. And now Ye Ying, with his very powerful lineup, is able to go through to the top eight, having defeated Muzzy and Killen all day, just farming the Americas region, the only non-Americas player here, 2-0 for the yep. day. Yep, pretty impressive stuff. While uh, we see at the lower half of the bracket, we will see Language Hacker and Muzzy uh, face off. I believe that's on Saturday. And then the winner will take on Kill all day to see who will continue in the top eight. That's right. So uh, with that, we are done with all of our matches, but we are also going to do a post show with Brian Kibler and myself. So don't go anywhere. When we come back, we're going to recap day number one and preview day number two. Welcome, everyone, to the Day 1 World Championship post-game show with Frodan and Brian Kibler, where we're going to recap, uh, review, and preview for day number two. So let's take a step back and look at the six matches that we had. We had all of Group A and B play their initial matches in winner's group today. What stood out to you the most here, Brian Kibler? I think uh, you know, probably the most uh, impressive thing that we've seen is just Bunny Hopper's continued tear. You know, he was the player who was uh, top of mind for a lot of people coming into this after making a second championship final just recently. And, and, and look at that. His his record overall in HTT this year is 32 and 7, which is an 82% match win rate. That is just outrageous. And a vast majority of that is up against other European players, largely touted as the most competitive region. Absolutely flooring statistic. That is a kind of win rate that you don't expect in card games, period, let yep. alone against the elite, uh, elite of the elite. So even after he qualified for the, the World Championship through winning uh, his first appearance at a championship this year, uh, he qualified again, made the finals. Now here he's at the World Championship. He's already through to the top eight. And, you know, he is just absolutely, as it says, hopping all over the competition. Yeah, and you can see why a lot of players pick him as the best player in the world, if not, uh, you know, one of the players that people just do not want to go up against. Another storyline that we are identifying as a trend, Rogue is the most popular class in the tournament, especially with Temple Rogue, but they had a very mediocre performance here, Brian Kibler. What, 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 what do you think of that? I, I mean, I think that anyone who is coming to this tournament not banning Rogue has a plan to beat Rogue. You know, I, I think that while it is an extremely powerful class, uh, it you know is difficult to uh, to. Uh, beat Warrior decks, for instance. We saw, at least in that first match, you know, while uh, Yu Ying was able to get his win against the Miracle Priest deck, he did struggle quite a bit against the Warrior deck uh, from Killing All Day. So I think that a lot of people came to this, they're saying, okay, I'm going to ban Warrior, or I'm going to ban Rogue. And the players who chose to leave it up, at least, uh, tend to have a plan for it. Sure. Uh, you know, we got a chance to sit down and talk to some of the players, too, and Bloody Face, who was 
competing today, but he'll be playing in his Group CD match tomorrow. He had a lot to say about his other peers that were competing. And, you know, this is not necessarily, he's like, hey, I don't really want to say too much because I don't want to be like a controversial figure, but I really feel like if I was forced to give a grade for this performance today, I would say on average the players were playing at a D or an F. I to be fair, I think Bloody Face has very high standards. Yes. I mean, we- Like we, a few mistakes, like two mistakes is like, that's a D. He's like, yeah, exactly. He is, uh, he's pretty critical. Yeah. Both of himself and of the AO, to be fair. Uh, you know, I mean, even the recent championship where he also appeared, made right. top eight once again, alongside uh, Bunny Hopper. He was saying, yeah, I don't think I played very well. Yeah, like, he, he was like, I don't, there's not even a letter in the alphabet that could grade how poorly I played. Yeah. And he, so he criticized himself, but he was saying, you know, that he felt like a lot of the play today was shaky to say the least. And then you combine that with every player that I was talking to, without a doubt, they were saying they were nervous. Yep. You know, and, and they have so much experience being on the stage. And, and I do think there's a number of factors to this. One, it's a world championship, right? The This is a, a tournament with higher stakes than anything that most of these players have ever seen before. Uh, and also, it's a tournament very close to the release of a new set. Unlike most tournament environments where these players have previously competed, they don't have hundreds and even thousands of games under their belt with these decks. That's right. It's a, a much more sort of accelerated pace of, of preparation. So, you know, while players may you know, have played at least at theoretically enough with their decks to feel comfortable with them, they're not nearly as practiced as they could be like most events they play. All right, were there any surprises on the opposite side? We talked about uh, Bunny Hopper and Yeying a lot for being the two guys that sit on top. You know, what about Muzzy? What about Blood Trail? Some of the other guys who have had really down performances and kind of spurred out. Was there anything that surprised you about their performances? I, I mean, I, I do think that it was a bit surprising to see them just, you know, dropping their their initial matches, but they had tough opponents, right? It, this is the world championship. Everybody seeing, has tough exactly. Yeah. Seeing seeing someone, you know, lose their first match, it's like, oh yeah, Blood Trail lost. It's like, well, Blood Trail played Bunny Hopper, right. you know, and Muzzy played Yu Yin, who, and while he's not necessarily a household name like Bunny Hopper or Muzzy himself, you know, he has just really impressed all of us, I think, with his performance over the past few events where we have seen him. All right, well, uh, taking a look at tomorrow, we're going to see the other half. Maybe Bloody Face could put his money where his mouth is. We're going to play groups C and D. That's Hunter Ace, that's Just Saying, that's Bloody Face, and that is Roger, who is going to be fighting in front of the home crowd. Day number three will be the Elimination Day. We're going to have eight matches, and we're going to have eight people sent home, or seven, excuse me, and then... Uh, then day number four, we're going to play out the top eight, quarterfinals, semifinals, and the grand finals. It's going to be an exciting day, and I, I can't. I, I'm so excited to get underway. Yeah, I, you know, I am absolutely stoked. I hear, uh, you know, the the tickets I believe for the actual venue are sold out. I, uh, I heard over the weekend, so I'm really looking forward to having you know, a, a huge crowd in here. They won't hear us; they'll hear the Mandarin casters. But <laughs> you know, still, just look at that stage. I'll get to see how amazing this venue looks. It's been a wonderful day and a fantastic way to kick off the Hearthstone Championship Doors World Championship. We've had a lot of exciting games and matches and plenty of upsets and shocking stories to come. But at the very end of it all, two players stood on top of Group A and B. Bunny Hopper from Germany, Yang from China. What's in store for the future of the HCT World Championship for the rest of the weekend? You're going to have to tune in and find out. Until then, well played.